What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Super Gamer Boys. I am your host and captain, Garrett Morlang, and here in the studio with me is the one and only Nerd Dads, Zetch Keenan. Hello, everybody. And Garrett, I'm excited to be back on video live. Yeah, have you... Actually, you, not live. You, you used to do you used to do videos for your podcast. I used to, but it would take me like hours because yeah. I would like record them and then you did like, a lot of editing with all the pictures. And oh stuff man, like that, and it looked it was pretty sweet, like the yeah. rundown of all the movies and stuff. But for about every what <laughs> hour of what do they say? Every hour of video you shoot is like three hours of editing. Yeah, I know that's insane. Yeah, <laughs> so I spent many many late nights editing those videos. But yeah. I'm happy to be back. I'm happy to do some more Super Game Boy stuff. Yeah, you've been. Uh, he's been on before. What episode was that? I'm trying to remember. I don't even remember. I should have looked that up. That <laughs> would have been smart. Uh, all I know uh, is I reviewed Gears of War. That's 5. what it was. <laughs> it was back. It would have been in uh, um, no October, October, November. October, October yeah. that came out. So yeah, good to have you back. Um, you may notice that JJ is not here. Uh, well, at least the video people audio. <laughs> you have no idea yet because I have, didn't introduce him. But. Um, JJ is going to be taking a little bit of a break, um, at least this week. I'm trying to get him to take more time off. But uh, as we mentioned in that post on uh, social media, there was a kind of a family emergency came up and um, he really, um, I felt, you know, he was so eager to come back and, you know, see all you guys, talk with all you guys and share everything he's been playing or not playing. You all know JJ. Uh, (laughs) But uh, yeah, I just, he wanted to come back and I told him, no, man, like you need to, kind of stay back and uh, yeah, get things settled with your family during this time. So yeah. uh, at least this week, um, maybe for the next couple of weeks, we'll see. Uh, but yeah, uh, so that's the update on JJ. He's not dead in a ditch somewhere. Uh, I did not fire him like I've been <laughs> teasing him the last <laughs> few months. That's like one of those jokes I always tease him about. Like, and then oh. People are going to fire up this episode and be like, he really did it. He, really he did, did it. <laughs> he got rid of him. He's gone. So the first like the five seconds of the episode, they're going to be like, oh, wow, he actually really did fire JJ. Wow. <laughs> yeah. And here's our new code. <laughs> Family emergency so. is JJ's gone. <laughs> yeah. Jeez. Um, but uh, cool. How's your week been? It's been busy. I mean, it's yeah. what, Monday. So it's been pretty busy for a Monday. Yeah, and then I, mean, I went to work and then came here. So yeah, no Mondays. I don't know. I feel like it's been hard for me to get back in the swing of things. Like with uh, sense of holidays for me, it's like yeah. I don't know. We I took quite a few days off after Christmas, and then the next week was New Year's, and we had like work Monday, Tuesday, had Wednesday off in the middle of the week, which is always weird, and then Thursday, Friday, and then I guess last week was the first full week, right? But yeah, it still felt weird, like doing my jobs. Like I was like I still like not in the swing of things yet <laughs> and yeah. then monday today i'm like oh man like that weekend went too way too quickly yeah. like you just get you too used to having vacation and you're like i don't want to work anymore i'm good yeah. i'm done <laughs> i always feel like holidays is like cool awesome i can actually get some stuff done around the house yeah never. and then holidays happen i'm like it actually happens i'm like i got nothing done yeah <laughs> wow i didn't do anything i wanted to do <laughs> yeah 100 percent feel you there <laughs> but uh, i did i did take advantage of the steam winter sale during the holidays. Oh, nice. I heard everyone talking about it and never checked it out. Oh, actually, I take that back. I bought Portal 1 and Portal 2 were on sale. I got them both for like $1.50 or something. <sighs> Those are good games. So I played, I actually played through the entirety of the first Portal. Yep. And I started up Portal 2. And the first one's a classic. I love that one. But I've never played the second one. So I'm excited to get through that. The cake is a lie. Yes. So remember that. <laughs> but yeah, Portal 2, I think I'm like halfway through that one. I just got busy with other stuff. Hmm. That game is really good. I like I think it's Steve Merchant that plays Wheatley in that, right? Uh, I'm not sure. I, I I need to Google that, fact check me. But yeah. anyway, the guy <laughs> that plays Wheatley is just really well done. That, okay. Portal 2 is probably one of the best sequels I think ever. It's definitely an interesting way to start it up. Like I've just played the first like maybe 30 minutes and like all of a sudden it starts up and yeah, there's like so many characters all of a sudden interacting with you and talking with you where the first one you're alone other right. than the, bi- the big whatever what robot thing. Gladys. Gl- Gladys. But... I don't know. It was that seemed very much like a generic just computer PA system. Where in uh, Portal Two, it's like, oh, these guys have personality. <laughs> like yeah. he's like making They're jokes and really stuff. Funny. And I'm like, okay, this is cool. It's like dry British humor the entire time. Yeah. Like it's solid. <laughs> it's a good game. It's awesome. I picked up um, Elder Scrolls Online. Oh, nice. And I also picked up Painkiller One and Painkiller Hell and Damnation. Okay, I've never heard of those. So. I've, I kind of bought them because when I was like in high school, there were games that I wasn't allowed to play. 
Okay. And they were like on sale for like a dollar. I was like, I'm going to buy these. That's us. Awesome. And they're I've just, almost, I'm, uh, I've almost done that a few times, like Grand Theft Auto. Like, <laughs> but it's like, I don't have enough time to put into that. So that's why I haven't. But it's right. like, as a kid, I wasn't allowed to play. I want to play as an adult. And I just never <laughs> pulled the trigger. But yeah, I've never got, I've never cared enough about Grand Theft Auto. Not even five to even want to buy it or play it. But it's been a um, like bestseller for like, what, 10 years? I, or I don't like understand. Every month America's it's number like, one. <laughs> there's so many other games out there that are <laughs> far and away better looking. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, I mean, it was an Xbox 360 and PS3 game yeah. that eventually got ported over to PS4 and Xbox One, and people yeah. still play it. And like, people still play it. Like, I don't understand you people. Can someone please, you know, send me a tweet, yeah. at me on that one. I'm daring you to at me yeah, why you like Jan- Grand Theft Auto 5. <laughs> why is it even... A game worth trying. I don't know. Um, Cool. Well, let's uh, move forward with some of this uh, quick housekeeping before we get into the actual show here. Um, If you love what we do um, and you want to support us, um, help us keep the lights, camera, mics on, um, help us, you know, get movie tickets and games in order to talk about and review on this podcast, uh, your Patreon support is huge. Uh, We're so thankful for it, uh, especially for... uh, um, Let's see. Shout out to our Patreon sponsors here. It's been a while. It's been a couple of weeks since I've done that. I'm a little rusty here. Uh, you can do it. I believe in you. Shout out to our Patreon sponsors. We have Bill Bird and Julie Bates, aka Grammy. Um, I'm glad uh, JJ's not here to you know talk all sexy to my grandma. I don't always like I'm that. I'm sure she's a nice lady. <laughs> she's a great lady, but I don't like the way JJ talks to her. That's for it makes sure. me feel uncomfortable too. <laughs> um, but uh, and all you others who who support us at. Uh, some of the other tiers. Thank you so much for that support. Um, couldn't do it without you. Uh, also, shout out to the HP Video Game Podcast Network that we're a part of. Uh, go check them out. Uh, you can find them on Twitter. Uh, and I think if you go to Apple Podcasts, that app, you can just type in HP Video Game Podcast Network, and uh, it shows all the shows on the network. So go listen to some of those. There's some really cool ones. Uh, and just uh, another quick shout out before we get into the show as well. Um, we have... Uh, if you didn't know, we are on YouTube. We have videos of the podcast, so if you listen audio every week, uh, go to supergamerboys.com slash YouTube, and uh, it'll take you right to our channel. You can subscribe there. Whenever we put up new channel or new videos, you'll get the notifications through email, or if you have the app, you'll get the notification on your phone. Um, sometimes it's fun to see what we look like. You know, Sometimes it's fun to go on there and comment how you know funny Garrett looks or something, or how um, How uncomfortably small does that look? Yeah. Uh, need, like, he, he's book. even sitting on a phone book actually right now. We needed a second <laughs> one, but no, just kidding. Um, but uh, yeah, go check that out and uh, share it with your friends. That's the biggest thing. Share this podcast and our YouTube channel with your friends because that's the best. You know, sharing is caring. It is. Care bears. All righty. So this isn't going to be another weird show. I think it was a couple weeks ago we had a weird show because there's just no news this time of year. We usually have our nerdy nude segment. It's been a few weeks, uh, but uh, game industry kind of dies <laughs> in the winter. Not a whole lot. Um, there's been a few things, but I th- did. I did know nerdy nudes. Okay. PlayStation or Sony is not going to be at E3 this year. News just dropped today. Oh, did it? Yeah. Okay. I saw this morning. People were speculating. I didn't see anything official yet. So right. I okay. Well, there you have it. E3 is officially dead. <laughs> <laughs> they weren't there last year. No. Yeah. So, and I guess E3 was. Pretty terrible. Ex- technically, I guess Microsoft wasn't there either. I was listening to another podcast where technically Microsoft was in their own theater across the street, but they weren't like in the actual convention but center. Everybody does that. I and mean, that's what Sony did the year before they weren't there. But they did have a booth still in in the convention center. So like people who were there were saying like it was just empty. It was dead. It was like really weird like to have this big open dead space. At, and like there weren't a lot of people in there. Like it was like it felt really empty and like on its last legs. So I don't know. It'll be interesting to see how many more years of E3 we get. <laughs> it makes sense though. Yeah. It makes sense. Yeah, but you yeah. know why? Cause that E3 is like so flooded with so many people mm. that like, you gotta like make some space. So if you do your own thing at your own time, you'll get more press covering you oh, instead yeah. of all this press covering, like a gajillion different things at once. And all of a sudden your news gets lost. hundred percent. Well, so, like last year, PlayStation, like a week before just did their state of play. It wasn't it like yeah. a week before yeah. and they had all the spotlight was on them. I mean, it wasn't like a banger state of play. I wasn't too impressed with it, but it was like, it was still all eyes on them at that point. So it was like, Hey, we got last of us coming. I didn't hey. know if they announced it there. It was something else. I think last year they, Oh yeah. They uh, I don't remember. I sh- 
I think it was like medieval was one thing coming in October yeah, and it was like a bunch of random stuff. Like, that. <laughs> like cool PlayStation, <laughs> um, which I mean, yeah. after seeing that too, I was like, Oh, well that's why I didn't come to E3. Cause they had nothing to talk about. Why well, I have a big press conference about nothing. <laughs> right. <laughs> hey, medieval's coming in October. <laughs> cool. Woo. That's a PS one game. No one really cared about. <laughs> I know. That's, I'm still boggled that they actually forked over the cash to remake that of all the games. Just goes to show that PlayStation doesn't have a very big variety of games that were actually important during that period. And they just have a lot of money because they <laughs> just throw it wherever the heck they yeah. want it. That's just like, <laughs> we have too much money. We're just going to support whatever the heck, you know, yeah. Joe thinks of on them. And why do you think they held off on remaking much. Final Fantasy VII for so long? And then they had to make that into episodes. Yeah. I know. That, that kind of blows my mind. Yeah. That, like, you're going to pay full price for this first part. For part then, one. And then, who knows, it could be like five years down the road, you get part two, maybe. Like, someone was saying, I heard... Uh, uh, it was reading somewhere that potentially it could be like up to three or four parts and doing the math. Like it could be like 15, 20 years before we get the whole game, essentially. Yeah, <laughs> I'm I like, don't understand. Uh, okay. Like based off of how long it's taken to make this first one, it could take, you know, another I don't know, 10, 15 Seven? years. Conservatively, 10 or 15 years to get the whole, just one game out, essentially. But Seven wasn't parts. even that good. It wasn't yeah. that good. I just played a little bit on Switch and it didn't hook me, but. I like, know on the Discord, <laughs> uh, I, Eddie out there, he got pretty heated, I think, when we talked about that before. But <laughs> Eddie, I respect your opinion. And I hope you respect mine when I say that it's just not, it's still, <laughs> I, I understand that you got some nostalgia ties to it, which makes a lot of sense. There's some games like, like Jet Force Gemini. That's also not a very good game. I love it. <laughs> but I'm, I'm also man enough to know it's not that good a game. <laughs> it's not a good game. Oh, man, calling Eddie out. I think uh, we're going to have to have a first uh, pay-per-view boxing fight between right. Zetch and Eddie. <laughs> <laughs> He'll, please don't. I'm pretty sure he's like four times my size. Uh, uh, I, I, think, I think he's just good at baseball, so that doesn't really help much in the whole boxing game. And so you I think you have baseball him. bad. I'm dead. <laughs> wow. I'm done. Street these. rules. <laughs> um, I can run really fast. Yeah, there you go. I got that going for me. <laughs> But yeah, um, anyway, I digress. So yeah, uh, other than that, and PS5, I guess, officially launched the logo, and everyone was like, cool, it looks like the PS4 logo, but with a 5, so yeah, I, that wasn't really I didn't understand either. why people were so excited about that. It looked exactly like what we'd all imagine yeah. it to be. My only thought is the people who are excited maybe aren't people who are super into the gaming circles and industry, like maybe we are. And so it was one of those things like a general consumer like didn't even realize maybe PS5 is coming out this year because mm -hmm. they haven't come out in the general like it's not like on Fox when I'm watching the football game. It's been like, hey, PS5 or yeah, PS5 coming this holiday. Like yeah. it's only stuff that's been on like IGN, GameSpot, all these tech sites. So maybe it's like, you know, it was revealed at CES, which is like a big, a little more mainstream, I think, than than like IGN or something. It's like the original um, E3. Yeah. And so when that came out and was shared all over Twitter, I think it was a lot of people who didn't even realize PS5 was coming out like, oh, shoot, PS5 got revealed. It's like, well, <laughs> we've known about this for about a year, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I feel it's like a lot of marketing too. Like I think Sony also has like a really good uh, media or PR team. Mm, and so they kind of yeah. know when to drop the news and to who to drop the news. Yes. Yeah. And so like they know, and like a lot of the news sources know that there is a lot of Sony fanboys out there that'll be like, yeah, mm -hmm. new logo. <laughs> okay, man, chill. It's a logo. Yeah, it looks just like PS4 logo. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know, man. It's going to be on your PlayStation next year. Jeez. But, yeah. Crazy. Crazy. Who? Yeah, this crazy Sony ponies, you know, this, they're the worst. <laughs> <laughs> Wink. Um, well, not, uh, let's uh, let's get into this first segment here. Uh, we're just going to do a quick what you've been playing. Um, so I have written down Elder Scrolls Online. Okay. Um, but I also want to, before I get into that, I also want to mention, I've been going through Metroid Prime 1 again with my mm. kids. So I've been busting out the old GameCube. Okay. And playing through it. And that game still holds up. That's awesome. That's one of the best games. It's one of the best FPSs ever made. I love that game. I, so I did this weird thing where I never played the first one. I played the second one Ooh. and loved it though. Okay. Like it was seriously, oh, I love the soundtrack. Like the music was yep, awesome. Same. And I mean, I, having never played the first one, I'm like, the gameplay was awesome. Like, I love the shooting and the story and, like, everything was crazy. It didn't make a lot of sense because I never played the first one. Because I think it kind of continues it a little bit. There's a couple things. It's like they refer back. I'm like, I don't know what they're talking about. But yeah, I've, heard, oh, I've only ever heard amazing things about the first one. So I want to try it. So the second someday. one's really good. I love the second one, too. Like, I think I'm also, Metroid is probably, like, actually, like, if I were to, like, like 
fanboy out over something, mm-hmm. Metroid is probably one of those things. Uh, like, I love Metroid. Metroid Prime 1. They need to re-release them on Switch so bad. I can't wait. I, I know for a, I know they're going to do it. I know they they're going to do it. To. They have to. They have to show <laughs> Metroid some love. There's, if, I feel like Metroid and Star Fox are the most neglected, mm. like, oh, Nintendo franchises. Yeah, yeah. And, <laughs> and, and Metroid comes out a little bit better because... They haven't really made a whole lot of bad Metroid games. I mean, you have Metroid Other M, which a lot of people didn't like. Mm-hmm. I never really played it. But even at that, I hear it's actually not too bad. But right. then you have like Star Fox Assault, which is just a bad game. Yeah. Like, like okay, now you're running <laughs> around the ground and it's really terrible. But Metroid Prime 1, I've just, man, mm. the, the music in it, like you said, like even like Metroid Prime 2, good soundtrack, Metroid Prime 1. Like the title song, the opening song for <sighs> Metroid Prime 2 always gets me. Like I would just literally turn on the game and not like go into it. I'd just leave it on the title screen just to listen to the song. Like, I actually I loved it. I actually have <laughs> all the soundtracks downloaded on my phone. That's awesome. Yes, and I do listen to them during work. <laughs> That's so how I focus. <laughs> so good. <laughs> um, but anyways, well, I've been also get, getting into um, Elder Scrolls Online. I picked it up over um, holidays. Okay. That game, I... So I got into the beta like when they first announced it like a few years ago and mm-hmm. played it and I was like, this game is garbage. I hate this game. Huh. This is not what I wanted. Now that they've actually had a lot of time to refine it, like they've had years and everybody's like been raving about they've it. They've had a ton of expansion and stuff coming yeah. out for it, yeah. And it was like eight bucks on Steam. I was like, oh. yeah, I'll take the gamble and, and check it out for eight bucks. Now is there like a monthly fee with that too? or? So there's a monthly fee if you want like premium content. So, like, okay. some of the dungeons you can't play and, like, some of the weapons you can't get or, like, some of the pets you can't own. Mm. But as far as, like, being able to have fun, run around with friends, like, still do some dungeons and boss fights, mm. you can still do that stuff for just, like, owning the base wow. game. Okay. That's and it cool. is exceptional. Like, I had one boss fight in it. It took a group of four dudes, mm. maybe women, I don't know. I mean, who <laughs> knows? It's the internet. Everybody's anonymous. But four of us to kill this thing and it was super intense it's literally at this point now it's finally that skyrim experience okay. with multiplayer with a bunch of other people with you yes. yeah that's cool and like the leveling system is really simple and like mm. crafting and things like that is kind of difficult i feel but it's not that bad okay i i give it a strong recommend if you're yeah. into mmos cool so yeah i am not in mmos like i i mean it's hard for me to give them a chance because I like so many different types of games and MMOs take up so much time. They do take a lot of time. And I have so little time already in my life between having a job and a kid and a podcast and a million other things. It's yeah. like, when the heck am I going to spend like, you know, 15 hours grinding on a dungeon or something? That's like, the thing. I don't have that. I feel like ESO also is does not require a whole lot of time. Hmm. You can okay. kind of just jump into it, do a quest, feel like you actually got something accomplished and jump out. Yeah, okay. in like an hour. Because that's even like with Destiny. I'm like, maybe I'll get into Destiny. Like, that's a cool one. It's like so much time. My buddy is always like, get into World of Warcraft. I tried it a couple times. Like, no, no World of Warcraft is tough. Um, yeah, so many. I feel like I've tried. I'm like, I don't know. It's just not for me, I guess. But yeah, I don't know. That next time it, it goes sounds, on sale for eight bucks, you should check yeah, it out. Sounds sounds like one at least worth trying <laughs> for eight bucks. I guess. Yeah. Not at all. <laughs> um, but cool. Uh, yeah, I've been playing some. Death Stranding, basically. Like, that's what my life consists of is when, <laughs> it, when I get a little bit of time to play video games, it's Death Stranding because I just want to beat it. Yeah. As I, much as I, I like, I would love to drag it out because, and I'll talk about it later, I enjoy, uh, I don't know, so much about it. Just like, it's such a relaxing game to me. Like, just, I'm going to go through a hike or go on a hike through the mountains and stuff. That's true. It's um, very cathartic. Like, I could just do all the side missions forever and never get bored. But it's like, I really need to beat this. Like it's what it came out in November, first week in November. It's been over two months and I still haven't beat it. I'm like I should have beat this by now. I've put like almost 50 hours into it. Um, How long is that? Is the main story in that game? Do you know? So I've heard some people who like to rush through the main story, get it done in about 35 ish hours. Okay. Um, 30 to 35 hours. Okay, I'm at like rich. 50 and I have three chapters left or four chapters left. Uh, but I looked up a walkthrough and it looks like the last like three or four chapters are just like one or like one mission each where some of the other chapters have like six or seven or eight missions in them. So I'm thinking they're going to be like quick to get through. Okay. Um, or really, really, really long. Or they're like really long <laughs> missions. <laughs> it is really like misleading. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see how that goes. But uh, I don't know, I'm still loving it. I Especially as I get further in the story, like it's kind of, yeah, it's definitely super Kojima. So yeah, but. 
that's that's what I've been playing. I don't want to talk too much about it because I have will, thoughts on that later. It will come up later, <laughs> but uh, just so everyone's aware, that's what I. And uh, actually, one other thing I played is another game I'll talk about later. But I jumped back into Katana Zero, um, and I was like, you know what? I I never beat it, but I got like really far into it. I was like, maybe I can try to beat it. I started playing that one. I didn't. Again, I ran out of time to completely finish it, but I'm like, ah, yeah, I love this game. Like, it's so fun. So, again, we'll talk about that. A little later cool um so here is that little later here uh this is our big topic for today's episode we actually promised a couple weeks ago that we were going to do our game of the year discussion for 2019 um unfortunately jj's not able to be here and he didn't get me a list or anything otherwise i would kind of read off some of his stuff but i'm pretty sure jj's games of the year are all my games of the year for all the exact same reasons okay yeah well that's canon You're welcome, JJ. that is canon uh, <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah, what we're going to do is start with just a few honorable honorable mentions, uh, throw out some titles out there and maybe give a few points here and there. I'm thinking just why they're good, but not great this year. Um, and then I think for the actual game of the year, we're going to do top five back and forth. Um, I want to start with number five and go to number one. So I think, cool. <laughs> which is weird because I think I ordered it on my page. I ordered it from number one to five, but... I kind of figured that's what you were doing, so that's kind of how I had mine listed, yeah, too. Yeah, but I want to actually talk about them the opposite direction, so cool. <laughs> sorry to confuse you uh, with the notes and everything, but it's all good. Um, yeah, I just wasn't thinking. I just put them in there real quick. So we will do like a countdown at the end and, again, give all our reasons why these were the greatest games of 2019 that cool. you guys should try. Um, why don't you go ahead and start with... Uh, just go ahead and give all your honorable mentions, and we can kind of discuss them, and then I'll give give mine, and all right, go from there. Okay, so my honorable mentions: Mortal Kombat Eleven. Okay. Okay. Am I like giving details on why I think that is, or just going that through? Um, yeah, go ahead and share like. Uh, I'll, yeah, t- I'll what, touch what, on them. Yeah, I don't want to go too big into it because you know yeah. we don't want to go super long today, but right. we also want to. I want people to understand like why these were good, but didn't quite make it great, but why they're better than other games, kind of thing. So cool. why is it where it's at? Okay, Mortal Kombat 11. Um, if you played Mortal Kombat 10 or even like the Mortal Kombat from like 360, mm-hmm. that game has progressed so well. Mm-hmm. Like graphically, mechanically, like it's one of my favorite fighting games. Like nice. it's super smooth. I feel like it's easy to kind of like just pick up and play with friends. Mm-hmm. Um, I like how they made like finishing moves more accessible. And Mortal Kombat 11 delivers on a really, really good story. Like it's okay. actually a really fun story. And the DLC and it's great. So Mortal Kombat 11. Um, Pokemon Sword Shield, because it is far and away one of the best Pokemon games ever made. Okay. Um, I didn't play Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu or Eevee just because I heard it was too uh, childish. I'm really happy I it's waited. Pretty, pretty basic, yeah. Yeah. Sword and Shield is like all that competitiveness you wanted with like a really mediocre storyline. <laughs> yeah. I've been having a hard time getting through it because I'm like, the story just is so boring. Oh my gosh. Me. I was like, all oh, these Pokemon are cool and fun. These worlds are cool and fun, but I'm not getting what's going on here. Yeah, it's kind of lame. <laughs> oh man, the storyline in that game is so bad. And I hate all the talking. I'm like, I just wish every character would have shut up and let me fight him. <laughs> yeah. Um, Death Stranding. Because it tried. <laughs> like, oh, no. I'm just kidding. That's really rude. Death oh, Stranding man. is when I, okay. So that hurts. I know. Well, Oof. I'm sure I'm gonna leave. I'll leave my points. I'm very... getting a tightness in my chest. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, am I having a heart attack? My I arm. Know. <laughs> I know it's a dangerous ground because I know I know you love Kojima, which is great. I'm happy. Yeah, I have a freaking shrine back here I, for him. He legitimately <laughs> does. But um, one thing I think one thing that as a turn off for me in, in Kojima games, which is probably a turn on for a lot of other people is that his stories feel so discombobulated <laughs> that it's kind of pretentious. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Like, I feel like he writes a game and he's like, who cares? I'm Kojima. People are going to buy it anyway. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, he's yeah, like, yeah. I just want this character to be in there. So I'm going to force it. I don't know. That's kind of what I feel with death stranding. Like I okay. really like the world and I really like the gameplay and I like how it's a game that's focused on, um, exploration and mm. less on just like going in and fighting stuff. Okay. Um, it, it's, it, it, it pulls my attention in that way and I really do want to finish the game, mm. but I, I, does that, that story, man, I, I don't know what's going on. <laughs> um, and last but not least is war groove. Okay. I don't, I don't know if you heard of that one. I have heard of it and it was one, wait, is this, uh, that's the, is that the free to play one? No. So oh, free to, oh no, war groove is the one that's similar to advance wars. Advance wars. Yes. And that's, Okay. Why I love it. 
Okay. I was a huge Advance Wars fan when I was a kid, and Wargroove hits every note nice. that Advance Wars ever hit, and the dialogue is great, storyline's great. I heard great things about it, and it just like was a sleeper. Like no one heard about it, no one really played it. But everyone who did play it was like, "It's Advance Wars," because Nintendo hasn't come out with an ad- Advance Wars in yeah years. So it's like, if you want your Advance Wars fix, get Wargroove. So. Yeah, it's That's like awesome. medieval Advance Wars. Okay. So instead nice. of like tanks, you got mages. Huh. So That's it's fun, cool. and if you like that sort of like turn-based strategy <laughs> game in that Advance Wars vein. Definitely check out Wargroove. It's a lot of fun. And it usually nice. goes on sale on Nintendo Switch pretty often. That's where I have it on Switch. I think they're doing their big winter sale right now. So if you are on oh, Switch, I, it's been going on for a while, so it might be at the tail end. By the time you hear this, I don't know if it'll still be going on. Yeah. But the last I checked, I still get not- I keep getting notifications on email usually. That, that games in my wish list are going on sale. So like Resident Evil 4 was on sale for like, I don't know, like 15 bucks or 10 bucks or oh, something. Still too expensive. Um, that's how I feel too. Like even though everyone raves about, it's the best Resident Evil game, it's also like... I don't know. I want to pay like five bucks for it. I mean, it's a GameCube game. It, it should be so well. cheap. It didn't age well. The, the fighting, okay. the shooting mechanics in it. I've never played it, so I want okay. I want to try it. I I did this weird thing where, yeah, when I was younger, I wasn't necessarily allowed to play Resident Evil games until yeah. like Resident Evil 5 came out on 360, and then I like jumped into that and loved it. Um, never played 6, and then, you know, played 7, loved 7. 7. Um, Resident Evil, 7's not it, like and, anything and the, like it was. Yeah, no. And then the Resident Evil 2 remake was like, that's going to be talked about later, but that was such a good game. Um, so yeah, Resident Evil 4. Yeah, so I was like 15 bucks. Nah, that's an old game. It should be a lot cheaper than that. <laughs> yeah. What I find ridiculous in that game, I'll touch on it real quick, is that who, what self-respecting police officer runs around fighting zombies and then every time he goes to shoot one has to stand absolutely still <laughs> so he can shoot him. It makes no sense. Yeah. <laughs> just, yeah, that is interesting. Like, I can't, I can't I, shoot unless I'm I can't walk and still. shoot at the same time. Yeah. <laughs> Are you insane? <laughs> Man, imagine if they did a remake of that. I mean, they're doing the if remake. They, do, they did um, a remake of two. A remake of three is coming out in a couple months. Like, imagine a remake of four. I feel like at this point, it's a cash cow for them. I mean, I thought I'm kind of... Like, they wouldn't lose money, that's for sure. They wouldn't lose money. I feel like Resident Evil 2 we'll talk about later, was so well done mm-hmm. that now that Resident Evil 3 is coming out, I'm like, oh, you guys are just just cashing in now. Oh, 100%, yeah. I mean, especially with Resident Evil 3, 99% of the assets were already made up probably because it's all just Raccoon City again. So they're yeah. able to just like click and drag. Okay, the only thing we have to remake is the main characters nemesis. and the uh, nemesis. <laughs> and yeah. I'm sure there's a few things that are going to be different, but it's like, for the most part, it's like, oh, this is real easy for them. Where Resident Evil 4 would be a little bigger remake because it's a completely different setting and zombies and all that stuff, but yeah, but still, I feel like it's just like so cheap. It's like, well, you know that story we did way back when. Pumping out remakes, Let's just do yeah. that again. I think Resident Evil Two differed yeah. in that, which will I got it. Oh, as long yeah. as long as they're still as long as they're still working on like a Resident Evil Eight though in the background, I'm fine with it. So if it's yeah. like, so say it's like okay, Resident Evil Two came out, Resident Evil Three comes out, and then maybe next year Resident Evil Eight comes out, and then they do like that three year cycle where like remake, remake, new one, remake. Yeah. I mean, obviously they're gonna run out of remakes eventually. Eight but, will probably come out on next gen. Is what's gonna happen. But uh, I like I would be totally cool with that. Like if they did some sort of like three year cycle where it's like until while they can do remakes, they keep doing them, and then once they run out, they're like, okay, now it's like you know, little game, little game. Cause they used to have like the Revelation series and all these other things. Yeah. Like they do like small game, small game, big game, small like if they. Yeah, if the remakes become just the small games. That's an interesting take. Yeah, that could be cool. I don't know. That might be kind of kind of yeah. neat. Because obviously they can only do so many remakes because there's only seven games at this point, and they're not going to remake a game that came out like yeah. two years ago. <laughs> but um, yeah. Although you never know. Sometimes they do HD remasters or whatever. Got to have it in 8K on my PS5. You know? Yeah. <laughs> um, let's see. <laughs> 8K. <Yeah. laughs> uh, some of my honorable mentions on here, I have Borderlands 3. Um, that was a really fun game, uh, because it was just more Borderlands and I've been, it's one of those things like, ah, I had a hankering for that. It's been a while since I played it. And even playing like the Handsome Jack collection on PS4 didn't quite like feel great. Like there just wasn't, there's just some like, uh, um, little things I'm like, ah, this isn't great. This doesn't feel good. This is like really, um, yeah, like gameplay stuff, I guess that was what I'm trying to say, uh, where when Borderlands 3 came out. I feel like, again, why it's on an honorable mention, not one of my game of the years, uh, it fixed a lot of those things, but not everything. Like, there's still a few things I'm like, 
well, the map's kind of crappy to get to. Like you have to hit start and like go over (laughs) three tabs to get to the day. Like just let me hit the middle button. The map comes up or whatever. Um, It should be easier to make a way, like stick a waypoint on my, or ping something on my screen. It should be uh, easier to get in out of friends games and stuff like that. Like I had issues with my buddy playing with him, like it kicking me out or like weird connection, which I think that was kind of across like a server issue across the board too. I remember hearing that in the news and stuff, people having issues. Um, But uh yeah, Borderlands 3 was a super fun game um, that just nailed a lot of things and just nailed out everything for me. So I'm like, okay, yeah, this is a good honorable mention. Definitely one to check out if you want more Borderlands. Um, but uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, Crash Team Racing Nitro Fueled. That, so I don't know if this is going to be a hot take or not. <laughs> like it depends, you know, I never know who. Like with JG, I can say whatever, and he doesn't really know what I'm talking about. But <laughs> you're a gamer, so I don't know how you're going to react to this. But I think Crash Team Racing is the best kart racer out there. I think it's better than Mario Kart, better than Sonic Racing, or whatever the heck they have. Like any, I think Crash Team Racing is one of the best, one, even just the original one. Um, it obviously the original one based off of the other Mario Karts at that time, and now that they've remastered Crash Team Racing Nitro Fields, I think time out. I think Nitro Field is better. You think CTR was better back then at the same time as Mario Kart? Yes. And even today, I think this Nitro Field is better than like Mario Kart 8 Deluxe and stuff. Okay. So I haven't played CTR okay. today, but I played it as a kid. And I, okay. I, I beg to differ, but <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I, 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 I figured you probably like when, I don't know, I think it's an un- unpopular uh, opinion, but I, I just love the feel of it way better than I like the Mario Kart feel. It's just like less floaty. A little more like solid feeling, mm-hmm. I think. Um, and then I love the, the world and characters of Crash. Um, the tracks were great. The power ups were all great. Um, I don't know. There's just so much for me. I mean, and obviously there's a lot of nostalgia ra- wrapped up in that. Yeah. Like, I didn't necessarily have, I didn't grow up in the Nintendo 64. I had a Super Nintendo, so I played like Mario Kart and Super Nintendo. Um, but that was like lame and you know, I mean, it was yeah. awesome. It was awesome until I got Crash Team Racing. I'm like, oh, this is a 3D kart racer. This is way Super better. Super Nintendo. <laughs> okay, CTR is better than Super <laughs> yes, Mario Kart. Yes, yes, But I did play Mario Kart 64 and stuff on like friends' consoles and I still always loved yeah. Crash Team Racing. So well, that's cool. That's cool. I don't know. So that's an honorable mention for me. I think it's a great game. Uh, better than Mario Kart. I mean, I even have a, I just, picked this up the other day it was 10 bucks at gamestop my little crash team racing funko pop so i'll check that out <laughs> there you go. he's giving it away <laughs> no, definitely not. this is my baby <laughs> now <just> my baby <laughs> um let's see pokemon and honestly we already kind of talked about a little bit a lot of the same reasons you said it's a fun game but didn't quite nail it yeah. and, and that's even with me i haven't played a pokemon game since pokemon ruby okay and emerald on game boy advance uh, and sapphire those three i've played uh, see, I played blue, yellow, X, mm. and then sun. Okay. And then this one. Okay. Yeah, I played all the Game Boy ones, all the Game Boy Advance ones, but once it went to DS, I never owned a DS, so I was never, never able to play for like the last, I don't know, like 15 years of that or something. Mm. So for me, a lot of like why I even love the new one too is it was just like a return to like my childhood a little bit. Like I haven't touched a Pokemon in 15 years. Like this is a lot of fun. I enjoy it. But then like now that I am an adult, like I'm a little more critical about the story. And I mean, so it's interesting to hear you even say, yeah. even having heard some of the story or played some of the story in the last couple of games, it's, yeah. it's still not a good one. <laughs> yeah. Like I thought that X, here's the thing about all the Pokemon stories. Okay. Mm-hmm. They're made to be super simple. Yeah. So you no, can't it's like baby's you, first RPG. Kind yeah, of yeah. You can't really, really critique them as a story. Mm-hmm. But X had less dialogue in it. And so you're able to be like, okay, cool. Yeah, no, I get the gist of the story. And mm-hmm. you still be able to play. This one feels like the story just puts yeah. the game on pause. And you're just like, I just want to fight and capture more Pokemon. It's just skipping through dialogue. Yeah. Yeah. And one thing I didn't like was the lack of, at least at the point I am in the game, I don't know, maybe I'm missing something or maybe I'm not far enough in or maybe I skipped the cut scene or something, but I just feel like there's no like villain. Like I loved in the old one, there was like team rocket. There was, um, oh, I'm trying to, was it team magma and team or whatever. And, and, How far and are Ruby you? and Emerald. I mean, there's like team yell and stuff in there, but they don't feel like, well, isn't like uh Rose or whatever that guy's supposed to be the bad guy. I don't know. I feel like they keep giving off that vibe, but at least as far as I am, like they haven't straight up said he is like he, I'm every time, sure every time, guy. every time I see him, I'm like, he feels like a bad guy. And some of the things he's saying, I'm like, 
I don't know if he's being totally 100 percent or not, but <laughs> again, like maybe I'm just maybe I skipped the, the scene or something and missed it. Because I, was, I feel like they haven't straight up said anything, and he keeps showing up, and I'm like, yeah. I don't know about this guy. They haven't said it yet, but I'm pretty sure he's a bad guy. I'm like all my Pokemon are like in the level 40s, and I think I'm like halfway done. But oh wow, okay. Yeah. Well, there you have it. I'm just terrible at paying attention to the Pokemon story. He's not much to pay attention to. Even if there was a bad guy in it, <coughs> it still wouldn't be gripping enough. <laughs> but yeah, but even still, like there is something about having like the Team Rocket, Team Magma, Team, I think it's Team Magma or Team Aqua, like whatever they were on like, uh, I'm trying to Your remember. Ruby and Sapphire? Yeah, Ruby and Sapphire. I'm trying to remember ones from Gold and Silver as well, what they were. But I don't know. I love those, like they're trying to, I don't know, take over the world with Pokemon or like capture yeah. and use them for their own thing. Like, and at least so far in, like like I said, maybe I just totally missed it in yeah. Sword and Shield, but I haven't picked up on like a storyline where, yeah, there's like this, the world is imminent danger kind of thing. It's just like feels yeah. like a little more smaller scale, like in this region or something. Yeah. But, I think what's going on in this one is like the bad guys are trying to take Dynamaxing to like a whole nother level. Okay. And that's kind of what it is. Which is a cool mechanic, by the way. That's worth seem, touching that, on. that doesn't seem so bad. <laughs> <laughs> like they're trying to, if I can, gi- if I can get even bigger Dynamax Pokemon. Like, well, I mean, like they're trying to take it so that double they can quadruple like, attack, Gigantamax? Like, take over the world or whatever. Okay. Like use it for their own personal gain. I don't know. I would, you know, I would corporations and such. I would bow down to my uh, Grookey overlords. <laughs> 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 they're all Gigantamax Grookeys. <clears throat> Excuse no. me. Um, my last game, real quick here. Super Mario Maker 2, that was a game that came out and I feel like for the most part really didn't make much of a splash. Um, it's very niche. Like for maybe like for a week, like it was like huge, like everyone was talking about it and you saw all these posts on all these new sites where, oh, so-and-so just made a level or this person made a level or, you know, someone from Naughty Dog just made a Mario level. Like, come play, like and those are fun to play. Like yeah. other, like Mario levels made by all these game developers from like other studios that you've played games from, like Uncharted or n- other Nintendo pro- yeah, like projects cool. or whatever, Xbox devs. Um, but, uh, yeah, it was one of those things where I I was just really bummed they didn't have more DLC. I guess I was really hoping for more support and adding more stuff because I really enjoyed the didn't build. Didn't they make like Zelda DLC and stuff? So they did, but that was like, uh, I don't know, what was that? Like halfway through, it was like the second week in December or something like that. Yeah. And yeah, it came know. out in July. So August, September, October, November, just sounded like it was like five months, nothing. And then even that, what they added, it was just like, if you make a Super Mario uh, Brothers world, like so only that theme, like not even the other themes, it's just that Super Mario Brothers from NES, then you could put a Master Sword in there to make him turn into Link. <laughs> and I was like, okay. Like it was cool. I'm not going to lie. Like it's really fun, <laughs> but it's like, okay, like that's it. That's all you got for me. Like I'm waiting for. Cool. Okay. Like I, I don't know. I was like, hoping for like maybe different art styles or yeah. something like that or maybe – um, more levels. Um, I don't know. Yeah, something. I don't know. I just felt like there should have there, there there's potential to be a lot Could more be DLC support. or something more support, and there just wasn't. Similar to like last year, they did, or I guess two years ago now, like Mario Party came out and they had zero d- d- DLC, and that was one like we were all at least I was expecting like oh they're gonna have all these map packs new and they're like new characters yeah. and all this stuff and like nothing. I'm like oh, dang it, like they keep doing that with some of their games. And yeah, I don't know why they do that. Yeah. Nintendo's a interesting developer. Yeah. I mean, it's not yeah, like Microsoft are. and Sony <laughs> that literally like withhold content just to release oh. it as DLC. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, that's all my um good picks. Honorable mention. So those are all fun games. Go pick them up. Uh they just weren't good enough to uh I I would say put on my game of the year. But better than some of the other games that came out that I played. I had a big list of games. I was surprised at how many games I played last year. <laughs> I have like, I don't know, there's like 18 or 19 games. I'm like, holy crap. I play a lot of games this year. Um, yeah. I feel like after I stopped doing Nerd Deads, I just take, I just play whatever I want now. And so yeah, even though I still nice. play a lot of games, I feel like <laughs> I get to play games that I just want to play. Mm-hmm. So usually they're like older games I didn't get a chance to touch on. Nice. But, yeah, that's. There's sometimes I'm like, oh, I miss the days where I could just play whatever the heck I want yeah. and like not have to keep up with all the new stuff. And like, I haven't finished this yet. I gotta move on already. Like, yeah. dang it. Like, I want to finish a game for <laughs> once. That's why I'm trying so hard to finish Death Stranding. Yeah. It's taking me two months, but I'll get there. <laughs> Thank you.
Okay, do you want to kick us off with your number five pick for game of the year? So this is our official top five here. So starting right. with number five. Number five, let me get my papers. <clears throat> All right, so. And just before we start, I think this list is super interesting how none of our... I purposely picked different games than you. Did you? Yes, I did. Oh, okay. Most of it, it wasn't that hard, but... Oh, yeah. I should have told you you could have picked the same games if you wanted to. Is I didn't it, want would, to. Would, would that change anything, or...? Um, I almost put Death Stranding on there. Oh, okay. Almost. Did I say Resident Evil 2? No. I did say Resident Evil 2. That's the one game that we ended up, I was like, oh, I Oh, I didn't see that. Oh, I, yeah, you did have that on. Yeah. Okay, so we do have one going in the cost. Okay. Yeah. But, yeah, um, okay. Yeah, I guess I, I should have told you that. Like, yeah, you can, we can put the same thing. But I just saw, I think it was interesting. I'm like, oh, we didn't really have anything crossover. That's kind of cool. Yeah. But, yeah. Resident ahead. Evil 2 did. Resident yeah. Evil 2 did. Yeah, I didn't, I missed that one. I will say this, though, and you actually said it before the show started is that this 2019 was a year where a lot of good games came out, but nothing that was like, man, that was like yeah. a whole new experience. Nothing that like hit you upside the head, like you gotta play this, this is yeah. huge. <laughs> like God of War last year was that for me. It was like, wow, I this yeah. game will forever be, it's probably one of my best games of the decade. Yeah, that's definitely one. That's definitely mine. Yeah. yeah, God of War, like the year before. Was it the year before that Breath of the Wild came out? Yep. Like it's been a few years of bangers, and then this year is like, like it's not a whole okay. Cool. I wonder if they're like holding out because they know they got consoles coming out. Oh, a hundred percent has to be that. Like, oh. yeah, they don't want. I mean, I don't know. On one hand, it's like oh, a hundred percent that has to be it, but then on the other hand, it's like, well, there's like at CES they announced that there's like a hundred. And six or 107 million PS4 units in the wild right now. So it's like, that's money they're just leaving on the table by not coming yeah. out with a big banger this last year. Like, that's 106 million consoles that could, yeah, yeah. that could be buying your game and you're just leaving that money on the table. So it's like, like yeah, it makes sense that they save it for PS5, but also there's yeah. so much money in PS4 right now and Xbox One. Who knows? <laughs> or maybe they just don't have a whole lot of original ideas. Yeah, they're that just could, kinda, that could actually probably be it. I mean, who knows? But I'm um, no, you know, Freaking, you know, multi-million dollar company runner, so or yeah, owner, right. CEO. <laughs> That's why we, we don't own. Uh, also, don't yeah, got yeah. enough grammar to run a company, apparently. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, so my number five pick is Bloodstained: Curse of the Moon. So the same guy that made Castlevania. If you remember the like Symphony of the Night. Yeah. Um, Those ones I never, never played because apparently I'm a fake gamer. So. Oh man, you are missing out, no. my friend. Well, that was a PS One game, right? Yeah, and I think it was one. That was one of those games where, like, my parents were weird about it. It was like, I don't want you playing that. Vampires, like, and, vampires, and dark and demons. It is. And a, stuff. It's a dark game. And so, I like, guess as, as an adult, I've always wanted to play it. Like, you can get on everything now. I think it's like on Switch, even. Yeah, stuff it's like everywhere. That. But just never pulled the trigger again. You should totally get a chance to jump into that game. Need some more of that Patreon money. Come on, support <laughs> us. <laughs> we can talk about it on the podcast for you guys. <laughs> Turn him into a real gamer Remember support when, his Patreon. Remember when we used to do retro reviews? Yeah, there we go. You need to support us so we can bring you all the old games that That'd be you've fun. already played and heard I about. I love to do retro reviews. That'd be <laughs> awesome. Um, but Bloodstained Curse of the Moon um, is, when it was first announced, it was like, announced like a few years ago, and you basically said he yeah. wants to make a spiritual successor to Castlevania. Wasn't it a Kickstarter deal? It was a Kickstarter game, yeah. Okay. So he made it totally, you know, Kickstarter-funded money, and um, I think his name is, uh, I know Michiyu Yamane does the music. Um, I want to say it's Ichigo, Ichigo something, or Igaruga? No, that's a game. Anyway, mm-hmm. you looking up the guy? Yeah, I'm looking him up. Uh, Michiru Yamane Yama. is the music. That's compo- oh, you are correct. Koji Igarashi. Koji Igarashi. See, I knew it was an I and a G. Um, so he basically accomplished what no other spiritual successful successor like developer has done, which mm-hmm. is make an actual spiritual successor okay. that feels like the original. Dang. Like Bloodstained, literally feels hits me like every every uh since of the word feels hmm. what, just like original Castlevania. Dang. It's awesome. The music sounds just like Castlevania. The gameplay is just as tight. Exploration is just as awesome. The animation of like the creatures and like the aesthetic is awesome. The story is still really good. Hmm. Like it is definitely a game worth picking up. I'm really, I think I, like right when it came out, I like pre-ordered it for like 30 bucks. So Dang. I got it. Okay. I didn't do the Kickstarter one, which is a bummer. So we've gotten much more cooler stuff with it. Yeah. But um, I got it on Switch. 
Oh, nice. And it did you have a lot of issues at? Because one of the reasons I held back on it for a while, it's on Game Pass now, so I've actually I have it on my computer. I was going to play it, um, or I I was going to install. I don't know if I, I don't remember if I have. <laughs> it's on your wish list. But um, <laughs> on Switch, I remember at the beginning they had bad performance issues where like people were losing their saves and stuff. Did that ever happen to you? you have no. any issues? Okay, because no. I heard a lot of people were like, I ate my save, like totally gone and stuff like that, or like weird like hitching. And I heard they were coming out with an update, but then I never actually heard the resolution if it came around. So no, I haven't had any issues with oh, it. Okay, it's I love it. The like even the map feels like a Castlevania map. Mm. Like that's awesome. It that's yeah. really cool. And they can just nail a remake or not a remake, but like yeah, spiritual successor like that yeah. to really like okay, this is this is actually a unlike what was a few years Mighty back number was like Mighty Number Nine. That's what or I was gonna say. Or even ukulele. <laughs> Oh yeah, with like the banjo because we yeah. kind of like feel to it. It's like this yeah, is which not. I was a huge banjo Zooey fan. Like, That's like one of my all-time favorite games. <laughs> and like ukulele didn't. It was like good enough. Like it was better than Mighty, Mighty Number no. Nine, mm. but not quite the Bloodstain level. Okay. So. Dang. Um. So yeah, I definitely recommend getting that one. It's pretty fun. Cool. So your number five, Bloodstain: Curse of the Moon. I also uh, picked up the prequel one to it too, which is actually not that bad. It's like Ritual of the Night or something. Oh. It looks like okay. an NES Castlevania. You That's swap cool. between like three different characters that can do different things or four. Huh. <laughs> it's right. That game's really good too. You should That's check really that one cool. out. <laughs> huh. Yeah, no, that sounds cool. Like, because so it's a different art style than Curse yeah. of the Moon. Yeah. Okay. It's really huh. cool. <laughs> That's cool. Um, my number five is Katana Zero. Uh, so this is a little indie game, uh, by ASCII Soft. It was actually published by Devolver Digital. Um, but. Man, this game came out and I didn't really hear a lot about it like in my Twitter sphere that I'd follow or like on any podcast I listen to mm-hmm. until there was one episode of a kind of funny podcast where um, like the the cameraman basically in one of their shows like piped in during a discussion was like, hey, like everyone needs to play this game. And I'm like, that sounds cool. I looked it up and like looked at the art style and I'm like, this looks really dang cool. Um so Katana Zero has like this really cool, um, like pixel. I don't know how to explain it. It's not. It's like neon. S- yeah, it's very Color's neon. Game. I'm trying to think of like. Is it pixel art? It is pixel art. Um, but yeah, I just love like the dark, like blues and purples and like pinks, hmm. and then like the yeah, like the bright like yeah neon blues and pinks and like bright lights and yeah, it's very much like very high con- contrast eighties feel to it. Okay. I mean, even like the title screen is like a a TV uh, with like you know put your VHS tape to oh, like really? watch the memories back and stuff like that. And when you hit the pause menu, it looks like like a blue screen and it says like pause and setting. Like it looks very much like an old like I don't know VHS like tape player or something like that. It's Cool aesthetic, cool graphic story? style. So the story, it's kind of, I don't want to talk too much about it because it kind of can spoil a lot, but okay. it's this samurai, I'm, I don't know, I'm just trying to keep it simple here. Uh, it's a samurai um, who he's kind of like been a soldier for a long time, coming back from a war, deals with PTSD. Um part of the game is like you know he sees his therapist um and you know picks up his drugs from his therapist like his meds and stuff that he's on um but then also his therapist is also the same person who gives them these i don't know missions essentially Hmm. secret missions (laughs) uh so he doubles yeah both the therapist and his kind of like uh and it go like a middleman between his his boss and you know him okay. uh, like it's one of those things where like he's never met the boss but he's like doing all these jobs because he's a skilled warrior and assassin so he's doing all these jobs and that's that's how it starts out is the, the missions you're doing are okay go assassinate this guy go assassinate this guy go kill this guy that's so sad um but uh he has this ability and i feel like this isn't really spoiling much because it's kind of the whole gameplay mechanic of the game i'm sure a million people have talked about it and you'll see it online but um Somehow, uh, that's what, that I won't say, but somehow he has this ability to basically rewind time. So if when you're doing a mission and you die, he just rewinds time and goes like back Braid. to being a mission. Mission. Um, I never played Braid, but I heard of it. Uh, I, like, and I've heard of that mechanic being from that stuff like that. Okay. Um, I think you should play Braid. Should I? Okay. Should. That game was beautifully done. Okay. I need beautiful to check that music. Out. Beautiful art. Anyway, they mean still your thunder. Keep going. Okay. <laughs> um, 
but yeah, it's such a cool mechanic. Like to you go through and hack and slash everything up, and he has this other ability. You can like slow down time. So so you go in there and like bolts are flying at you, and it's one of those things where one bullet kills you instantly. Like oh what? Yeah. So one hit and you're dead. So you have to go through and kill everyone without getting hit. getting hit. Oh wow. Um. So like you're running through and you can go normal speed slash slash slash, and then when there's like a bunch of guys shooting at you, you go like slow motion like jump over bullets and like slice this guy, pick up a bottle, throw it at that guy, like uh-huh. do all this cool stuff. And then once you finish and you leave the room, um, as you go room by room at the end of every room, it actually shows you everything in real time after you finish it. So if you did a bunch of slow motion to beat it, <laughs> then it goes rewinds. It's like, you know, and it says, Oh, that was good. You know, the, oh, cool. the, the idea the way the mission structure is, is essentially it's as if he's like planning it out in his, in his head. And then when you actually reach the end of the room, then he's like, okay, yeah. And then he, he does it. Oh wow. That's crazy. Cool. So it's kind of okay, like, it's just like, it's a really cool like way to like, um, like the gameplay is cool, but then also like the way they just portray it on screen is like really neat. And, huh. um, yeah, so it's a really cool game. Yeah, the biggest thing was the, the graphic style. I just, I love those contrasting colors, like the neon, stuff like that. Cool story. The gameplay is awesome. Yeah, basically live, die, repeat, essentially. Like when you die, you just, and that sure. actually kind of like comes into the story later on. There's actually a cool like little segment between you and like this like evil villain guy where like, yeah, it's just really cool where he keeps trying to kill you and he can't kill you. And it's kind of crazy. Um, and, uh, Another reason I wanted to put on my list as well, I just have here, just, I just wrote on the notes, like, Forgotten Indie. Like like I said, you didn't hear a lot about it when it came out. Yeah. Everyone kind of passed over it. People who played it loved it. Um, but other than that, it just kind of, like, went under the radar. Yeah. Um, and actually, I forgot to write on here, too, I think this has one of the best soundtracks this year, honestly. Like, I have it on Spotify, hmm. and I listen to it over and over and over again while I'm working. It is an amazing, like, synth, like, wave kind of I 80s uh, soundtrack. I love it. It's all instrumental, um, and it's, like, gets you so hyped. Like, I just always get so hyped. It's not, like, a relaxing, chill pod, uh, listen. Like, it's way more, like, dark, gritty 80s synth, like, uh, okay. it's really cool. Kind of like Axiom Verge? Yeah, probably kind of similar to that. I'm trying to remember. I didn't I played a little bit of Axiom Verge. That was one. I, I'm i bad at Metroid, like the older Metroids. Oh, really? I'm really, oh. like, I love them, but I'm really bad at them. Those are my jam. So, like, yeah, playing Axiom Verge, I'm like, I love this. I'm really bad at it. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, so that's my number five pick, Katana Zero. It was a really good indie. You can, I think you can get it at a decent price because, you know, it's a smaller game. Um, and, yeah, it's a cool little, like, out of left field. I wasn't expecting it this year. Oh, okay. I'll have to check that one out. Yeah. I think yeah. that's another reason it's on my list because I was like, I'm usually not one, like, I'm not really the indie game guy a lot of times. And then when I saw that, I'm like, oh, shoot. Like, they make some really cool indie games. Like, well, I feel Devolver like Devolver is more of an established developer, too. Yeah. But I mean, they just published it. They didn't develop it. So it was like a, oh, another, so. it was a smaller developer and Devolver just published it for him. Oh, so that's yeah. Really like, cool. So let's see. ASCII Soft. I was gonna go to their Wikipedia to see what other games they did, but they don't even have one. That's how small they are. So wow. <laughs> <laughs> um, Maybe it was like their first game. Uh, the other, other, the only other one they made in two thousand nine was Downwell? Ta- Tower of Heaven. Oh, which is another kind of looks like it's a two D action platformer. Um, there's a flash game. Oh wow! So they went from that to Katana Zero, <laughs> which is a little Way bit of a go, jump, guys. but yeah. Check it out. It's a good one. Yeah, it's the second time I've heard that game mentioned. I listened to another podcast, and um, one of the characters, or the characters, one of the hosts on there was talking about how it was one of their games of the year, too. Mm. So, nice. so, yeah. Katana Zero. Check it out. Yeah. Um, My number four game is Rage 2. Okay. That game was like... So, have you ever played the old Mad Max game? Not the old Mad... Like, the Mad Max game that came out like on 360, like, a few years ago. Uh, PlayStation. Um... Well, there's one on PS4. That one, Fear, or not Fury Road, but not Fury. Right? It was just called Mad Max. I think it was just called Mad. I think yeah. they, it got that, ported over to okay. PlayStation. Okay, because it was like a Xbox PlayStation one. Plus game one month, so I have it. Yeah, and I played a little bit of it, and but never, not a ton of it. But okay, yeah. so that game was actually probably one of my most favorite underrated games ever made. Okay, that game, the fighting in it was really good, the exploration it was really good, but most importantly, the car mechanics. Yeah, okay. I heard they had great, yeah, the car combat and mechanics and everything were great. Yeah, super good. Now marry that up with Doom 2016, Okay, and you got Rage 2. <laughs> That's awesome. So <laughs> you have really fun driving around car combat parts, and then you have really fast, visceral, 
like shooting parts. Hmm. So it's open world. So basically it's just like your average like action hero movie where you're like, you're the last ranger hmm. and you didn't expect to be the ranger and you got yeah. the suit. Now you got to go and fight the bad guys. And you're the only hope man, mankind has. That's awesome. So, <laughs> it takes place in like this. It. I never played the first Rage. I did. Okay. So which, yeah, Rage 2 is always like so weird to me because the first one it's the opposite in is like everything. so serious and so brown and drab and basic and boring and like no humor and very serious. And so yeah, all the marketing for the second one, I never played the second Rage 2, but all the marketing is very like silly and goofy and yeah. seems like crazy and zany. It's all neon colors yeah. and craziness. It, I'm like, this it, is a very, very different game. It feels like Borderlands. <laughs> okay. If Borderlands were like, you know, Mad Max meets Doom. Okay. So yeah, and it's better a, graphics. It's a, yeah, <laughs> with a non cell shaded graphic. Yeah. yeah. So it's really good. Like the you get different abilities, you power up. Um, you basically have like this like super suit basically that can like make you do like all these crazy things like move really fast wow. or like use like some like force push ability and you like literally blow people away. Hmm. Um, really fun gunplay on a bunch of different weapons that are all upgradable, different like skill trees. And then your car has like skill trees. Dang. So, um, and you, huh. it's really addicting. Like I have yeah. it on PC, so I'm playing on PC. Um, I tend to like, I, I enjoy it more with the controller. I think it's on Game Pass for PC, right? It is on, it's on Game Pass so, for uh, PC and Xbox. And Xbox so yeah. if you have Xbox or PC and you have Game Pass, Check definitely out. download yeah. it because it will be worth your time. It's really, um, the humor in it is also still very Borderlands-y. Okay. Um, and yeah, I've said um like a thousand times trying to explain this game and it is really good still. Yeah. So definitely check it out. I put a lot, put, I probably put more hours in that game than I thought I would. So okay. It's really yeah, fun. I know. I That was one that came out and I kept thinking about it, like, should I pick that up? Like it looks fun. It is fun. But I, I don't know. I, I don't remember if there was anything else. There might've been something else coming out around it too. And it, was, it got that, overshaded, that, shadowed that, by him. That happens a lot where it's like there's two games and I just have to like, you know, pick one or the other. And I believe it came out at the same time Resident Evil 2 did. Uh, and I think Resident Evil 2 ended up. Um, okay overshadowing it which is interesting because it's a february game and not a whole of games are you know february Resident Evil weirdest. 2 was a dang good game so yeah. <laughs> um no that's cool i now that i've because i i haven't really heard of anyone else who who did love it like i've heard people are like yeah it's a good game it's fine it's whatever but um <clears throat> and then not any of my friends that i know haven't even touched it so mm. knowing that Shame. it's on your list and you know how much you loved it Oh, I'm curious to give it a try at least. Now that it, since it's on Game Pass, it's like why not? Yeah, it's you know sometimes even though it's free, quote unquote, you know on Game Pass, yeah, um, it's still like oh, it takes so much time to download and install my system. But just knowing that you know someone loved it, it's like okay, that's worth my time. Like yeah. that's worth downloading, and installing. But and navigating the world in your car is really easy. Okay. You basically set waypoints, and it's kind of like uh, you get like you know like you have like a driving line, kind of like in Forza. Oh, you nice. just follow the line. Okay. So we're like, oh, I want to go here. You ping it on your map, and then you got like little arrows that you just follow all the way to get there. And that's awesome. Blow things up along the way. Yeah, I know the weapons always look so cool in the uh, all the trailers and stuff. Just yeah. like blowing the crap out of the stuff. The bosses like, are huge, <clears throat> and it's not like you just go in there and like start bashing them. You actually have like like some of them have like traps around the room that you can actually like use against oh, the boss. Okay. So, so you gotta you think can about it a little clever. bit. Yeah. Yeah. It's really it's really well. I'm really sad that I didn't get the the love and appreciation that it could have. Yeah, no, no one. Been. I basically, since it came out, I haven't heard anyone talk about it. So it like came out and like poof, gone, like a fart in the wind, you know? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's definitely worth going back and checking out, especially okay. since this game was kind of a dry year for games. So yeah, I know there was like, it's not much going on. So or maybe we're just worth... getting older, Garrett. Yeah. It's getting old and games are getting boring. No, <laughs> that can't be <laughs> it. I assume we think sometimes. That can't be it. That can't. <laughs> oh, man. That's ridiculous. That's the most ridiculous thing you've ever said. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, oh, goodness. Man, maybe I won't have you back on the podcast, <laughs> man. You're just hating on games. JK, like, JK, no. hello. <laughs> um, I didn't mean it. <laughs> um, let's see. My number four is going to be, I think, a shocker for some people because I'm not really, uh, yeah, I'm not really a multiplayer guy. I uh, talk about like single player all the time. That's why I love PlayStation because they have single player stuff like galore. Like that's what they just nail like as their exclusives, single player campaigns. Mm -hmm. 
multiplayer games not my thing usually like i'm not one to even do co-op like i'm just like eh, like it's okay yeah, but i just that. i just love to play on my at my own pace like and not have to worry about other people or other things going on whatever um and especially battle royal games uh, i really actually enjoyed PUBG a bit but again like that was one that was hard to like get into really like yeah. i enjoyed the you gameplay the and like the world it. but it's like i don't have time um and Fortnite, i just hate because it's dumb and i hate the building because i'm old and slow <laughs> so i can't build that fast uh, time out a second Fortnite is not that great a game no yeah I know. that's what i'm it, saying it's I'm, bad it's so I'm, yeah i agree with you 100 it's uh, not because you're bad at Fortnite. It's okay. just because it's not worth playing yeah okay finally someone agrees with me man like, <laughs> jj well i think jj is obligated to say he likes it because his son would otherwise like kick his butt so i think that <laughs> I can see why it appeals to kids, and I'm really happy that kids enjoy it. I, For you grown-ups out there, I'm happy you enjoy it too. But you might want to, I'm just saying, like my buddy Garrett here. <laughs> There's a lot go, more go, out there. Go, go exploring, okay? <laughs> um, but a battle royale that did catch my attention that came out of literally nowhere this year. Yeah. Um, it was shadow dropped out of nowhere, no marketing, no nothing, just like, boom, check out this shop, go download this free battle royale game. Like, yeah. okay. Uh, Apex Legends, like I forget that that came out this year. Came out of left field, made by Respawn, people behind Titanfall one and two, as well as the new uh, Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order game. Um, they nailed it, man. Out of nowhere, like it was one of those things where like Fortnite and PUBG like didn't even know. Like I don't know I always yeah. picture like the Smash Brothers like Challenger approaching. Yeah. Like they didn't even <laughs> see it coming. Like all of a sudden the screen comes up to like shoot like what, what? <laughs> like where did you come from? Um, I thought it had like the most amazing feel for a first person shooter. Which I mean everything I've heard about Titanfall, which I just got Titanfall two because it's free on PlayStation Plus last month. I haven't played it That's yet. That's such a good game. I got it That's now. All time favorite shooters. Yeah, so it was free, so I need to hunker down and play it. But I, I, all I've ever heard is like they have the best feel. Like there's such a good feeling, like shooter game, uh, like the sliding mechanics and all that stuff. Every level in Titanfall two feels like something totally different. It, you will yeah. not get bored. Okay. It's good. Yeah. And I mean, they just brought that heat though into Apex Legends. I felt like, like everything I heard yeah. about those games, I was like, I feel it in this. Like they brought their A game with like the, the snappiness, the, I don't know. Yeah. The feel of the game is great. Um, the, uh, they were, I mean, I, they brought in this revolutionary ping system, like, which is crazy. Yeah. Like PUBG and Fortnite didn't even have a way to like yeah. put waypoints or ping things. Like it was all you very, play oh, the game without could, talking to anybody. Yeah. That's which, that changed the game. Like you could jump an apex to your trio and yep. you didn't need a microphone, yep. which is so great because I hate talking to people online. Yeah. <laughs> like it's always the weirdest thing. Um, unless you're playing with buddies and you got to jump in and be like, Oh, I don't need a microphone. I don't need to, you know, worry about, you know, pissing people off because <laughs> I'm not communicating. Like if I don't use a microphone, then they're like angry and they, or they rage quit and leave. Yeah. It's like with this, like everyone can ping things. The ping was smart. Like if you pinged your ammo, it's like, I need ammo. Like ammo over here. everything had dialogue lines tied to it with your character. Yeah. And that's another thing. Like all the characters in that game were great. Like I love all the, like the personalities are fun, but then also like the abilities are really cool. Um, although this, yeah, they had really fun weapons. There was just so much about it that I'm like, they nailed Battle Royale for me. Like I was like, this is so much fun. They took the the best of like almost uh, of an Overwatch with like the hero shooter yeah. and mixed it with that Battle Royale, mix it together. And um, that's exactly yeah. what they did. And I mean, and they, you know, got it in one. Like it was like so good. Yeah. Um, and I feel like honestly, like I haven't heard as much people talking about it lately which is kind of sad like i don't know if it's actually losing traction or maybe just my friends are just moving away from it a little more but yeah, that's losing traction. um just i sad. don't know i i played around the other day though and i'm like it still feels good it's still a fun game like i still really enjoyed it yeah um but yeah i don't know they just, i feel like there there has to be something big maybe in this new year to bring people back like because it is a, such a good game it'd be a shame if it if it went yeah, away yeah i don't think they're gonna leave it alone i mean the interesting thing is that is that it is a free-to-play game mm. so i think what they make their money off of just like battle passes and skins and stuff yeah so i i haven't checked the amount of players on it recently so maybe it hasn't died off but mm. I I know, just, it definitely I know media, feels that way but i know yeah, the I media know. is dialed back on it so. oh yeah yeah you definitely don't see all the i don't know all the marketing stuff you saw when it first came out but yeah, that was just top-notch, triple-A, like, Battle Royale game to me, but... 
Do you have an Apex Legend channel on the Discord? I think I do. I don't know. You should, because I'm totally down to get down on Switch. I don't know. I don't know if I do, only because uh, I always just played on PS4. Ah. So everyone just says party chat. But uh, I could make one just for people who want to play on PC. Let's do it. <laughs> it's free on yeah. PC too, guys. Yeah, I know. That's, Jump in. that's the other crazy thing. I named all these amazing things, but it's it's a free game. Yeah. Like, you can go get this game for free. I mean, unfortunately, it's not like in Fortnite where you can get on your phone, your toaster, your fridge. Uh, but you can. I don't know. Why would you even want to play Fortnite on your phone? <laughs> no. That's I mean, so hard. Un- until like two or three months ago when they added controller support, like, yeah. why would you want it? Like, now it's like I can put my. PlayStation 5 controller on to my phone and play no problem and that would be kind of cool yeah. but otherwise yeah it's like I don't know. but yeah on all the major consoles and you can go play this for free like it's bizarre yeah <laughs> yeah it's a good game so that's my number four go check it out and yeah it's a crazy that you know multiplayer game uh, made it on my list like strictly multiplayer like it just blows my mind because it's not my thing it's not your jam <laughs> yeah I'm mostly a single player guy too I don't have time to get my butt kicked by a bunch of kids on yeah <laughs> on a multiplayer game no matter what it is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um. Okay, so my number three is Resident Evil 2. And the reason being is that it's not really a remake. Okay? Resident Evil 2, I feel like, in a world where almost every console has, like, you know, you know Final Fantasy Remastered or... You know, Legend of Zelda remastered. Like, all these different remasters of different games that, you know, were good back in their heyday, but it's like, yeah, they're just nostalgic enough to for people to fork over the cash to buy again. Mm-hmm. You're essentially buying the exact same experience every time. Right. Just different skins or textures added to it. Resident Evil 2 took an old story, threw that into the Resident Evil 7 engine, which is what, I forgot what it's called, RE engine? Yeah. And made... A brand new experience with it like that game mm. the terror in it feels really good Dude, like it's so good it's fun resident evil 7 did a good job with the first person and i felt really scared in the first person view mm-hmm. i still feel just as scared watching my character in third person in resident evil 2 yeah. especially when mr x shows up Oh, dude. Especially the, so, just the footsteps. Oh, the audio design in that game is so dialed so, in. Yeah, so, it's so dialed in. So, I the spoiler alert. This is my number two, and I'm going to share some stuff here. That way, we just we'll skip over it later when it gets to me. But yeah, that was my biggest thing. Is like when I first sat down. Uh, well, the first time we played, we actually played on stream. But then after that, once JJ went home, I just put on my headphones, my nice yeah. you know gaming headset with like cranked up all like the you know the cinematic EQ and everything, and seven point one surround sound, all this stuff, and like played it in the dark. And then when you hear the doom, 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 and you're just like, oh my gosh, yeah. I'm gonna pee my pants yeah. right now. Like <laughs> it's so dark. I need to run. Or or you're in a pitch black room with like just your flashlight, and you just hear like the like scratching or like the dragging of feet, and then like a little groan or something like around yeah. the corner, like water dripping. <gasps> like the sound design is amazing. So like perfect. that should have won like the best sound design. At, Pipes at, like the like, way the steam and everything. That game is and, it's, and it spooks oh, you the heck out. Like yeah, all of a sudden you like you said like all of a sudden. Tss, like a pipe yeah. burst or something you're like ah, oh shoot like okay and the you're rain, like, ah. <laughs> like that game and oh my gosh just on sound design alone that game that game won me over yeah because no, it's it's incredible yeah i went so um a few years back i had a chance to go to skywalker sound dang okay and actually go they were actually doing the foley sound for dr strange when okay. i went there right so i was able to actually like watch dr strange a little early it was pretty cool that's awesome um but they were working on the foley and the guy that did it all, I was actually asking him, you know, if they did any video games. He's like, oh, yeah, we do like Batman and stuff like that. Mm. So I was actually able to watch them actually do the Foley sound because that's the one thing nobody really understands is that when they're making a game, it's not like you're making a movie where like the, you can actually kind of record the audio as it happens. Right. Right. Which even in movies, they really actually even don't do that. They go back and record it afterward. Yeah. But for games or animated movies and stuff like that, they actually have to do that mm. behind the scenes. So it gave me a whole other appreciation for sound design because having to do that, you actually have to think creatively like, okay, if that pipe's going to burst, how's it actually going to sound? Right. It's not, I mean, you can record a quiet bursting, but if you don't have that on set, like what do you got to use? So yeah, the sound design of that game was just so phenomenal. And the characters, I mean, like the story, you could, the dialogue in was, and it was very dated. Yes. Like it was, that did not age well. I wish, I kind of wish they would have just gone back and just like redone the whole thing. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, Commander Cool Home, you know, so just don't (laughs) give me a half game. So I wish that they would have fixed that, but 
the graph graphically and everything like that. Yeah, the graphics were insane. Like even like the physics of things, like yeah. shooting zombies and like arms and limbs flying Ooh. off and blood and gore. Like I was like, the, oh man, this the is... pacing, the way they have your ammo and everything spread out. Oh yeah, like you can't just. I yeah, I was I loved how much they yeah restricted all that. Like I know. Resident Evil has always been like that survival horror kind of like keep you on the edge of your seat kind of thing. Like, am I going to have enough ammo to get through the thing? But I've just felt it. Yeah. So much more in this game as like, it was really well paced where it's like, okay, I have like six bullets left. Like I hope I make it. And it was always right at the perfect time. Like, okay, right before, like I really needed it. Or like maybe I used the last bullet and around the corner, like, yeah, you're right. It was like, they didn't give you too much ammo. It wasn't too little ammo. Yeah. Um, the, health, yeah, same health, health, yeah, health. There was always like an herb right around the corner you could find, or some. And the and the beauty of that game spray. too is that it wasn't just like a run and gun zombie shoot 'em up. No, yeah, it was more of like okay, I gotta get here. I know here there's a ton of zombies, and here's where I gotta get to. So I have all these other routes. How do you got like you spend yeah. most of your game time playing that game, just like planning, looking at the map, where yeah. you the most. <laughs> <laughs> successful <laughs> options you have there's, at your disposal. Yeah. There were so many times like, yeah, I could have just gone whoom, straight through this room, but there's all these zombies or I like take this long route all the way around. And I know there's like one liquor in there, but if I could run fast enough, I could avoid the liquor. I could stay yeah. ahead of it. I'm like, I'd rather take my chances without running a liquor yeah. than the six zombies in this room. <laughs> so I'm just going to go for it. And it's like <laughs> down the hallway, around the other hallway, through a door, shoot, climb through a window, like jump over a desk. And like, oh, so and you good. finally make it to a safe room. You're like, yeah, Whew. with the calming music. Can like, I just stay here for the, the, a few minutes? The, the eerily calming music <laughs> in, in the save room. I'm like, oh, this is so good. <laughs> yeah. So Resident Evil 2, number three. Definitely yeah. worth if you're not a if you're not a horror game fan, definitely not your jam. No, like don't get it. Not. But it I, it I really like it. <laughs> yeah. So uh, cool. Uh, my number three is um, that's what we're doing, right? Yes. Three. Uh, Cause my number list three. is, my list is backwards. So it's right. throwing me <laughs> off. Uh, number three, I picked, this is going to be another weird one, but call of duty modern warfare really hit me this year, like out of nowhere. Kind of for the same reasons. It's a remake without being a remake. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I just really felt like Normally, I just play Call of Duties. Like I said, I'm not a multiplayer guy. I normally play Call of Duties just for the story. Mm -hmm. And they're never like amazing, but they're pretty good. And yeah. it's like that action junk food fix that you right. want. It's like, this is just like run and gun and blow stuff up. There's cool set pieces. And like, and then you're done and you're like, whatever, cool, move yeah. on to the next thing. Yeah. Um, play some zombies or something. Yeah. Um, but uh, this one, I, I think it's one of the best campaigns that they've ever put out. Like, it's solid. The story was just it's a good game. insane how good it was. Like there's actually like r amazing acting by these, by people like good voice acting. Um, I don't know if the likenesses in the game are actually like mo -capped or something in our actual actors. I never yeah. actually looked that up of like the people in the game are actually real people or not. Cause I know in previous game they've done that. Like Kevin yeah. Spacey's in a game and dude from game of Thrones is in a game and all this stuff. Kevin Spacey. Um, <laughs> that was a terrible call of duty. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, uh, uh, but in this one, like, yeah, like the actors, actors slash voice actors, whatever they did there, so good. Um, the graphics were insane, like playing on the PS4 Pro. Uh, well, even, so when I actually played it, I played, um, I think I played the whole thing and beat it using remote play on my computer. I was in San Diego. My PlayStation was in Modesto. And so you I- can do that? Yeah. 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 Okay, after the show, you guys should so, set that up because I want to play PlayStation on my computer, but yeah. my wife will watch like TV shows. Like, I want to play a PlayStation game, but I don't want to take the Dude, TV away. it's awesome. Yeah. All you do is plug in through USB, plug the PS4 controller into the computer, USB cable. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, yeah, basically you just log into your PSN account through the app that you download on the computer and it just well, turns on your PlayStation. Did you guys know this? So <laughs> it's, I, I preached it back when I played Call of Duty the first time around, but. So you guys knew it. But yeah. I'm not, well, I, I don't need, know. I need to listen to the podcast have, more mo apparently. Most, most people don't listen to the podcast anyways either. They just, they, <laughs> they, pin, they, hit, pl they hit play and then just put their headphones down. <laughs> um, but, uh. No, yeah, the graphics were insane because it was like even on 1080p on a streamed, you know, server from going from my house down to San Diego, like I was like this game looks really dang good. And then I came home even after I beat the campaign because I beat it in like five, six hours, like 
over the course of a couple of days in San Diego, I came back. I was like, I just want to see what it looks like on my 4K TV, uh, my PS4 Pro. And I'm like, this is beautiful. Like, this is so good. Um, and then, so yeah, campaign number one, go check it out, even if you're just in the single player thing. But then this is the first time a Call of Duty multiplayer completely sucked me in. Um, multiplayer. It's- and it was because like the main thing that I played and I literally like there's one night I stay up to like three or four o'clock in the morning, like on a work night. Like I was just like, got so into it. I had my double XP going. They give you a bunch of boosts at the beginning. <laughs> um, I played the, the two V two gunfight. I think it's called, I always mm-hmm. forget the name of the actual thing. I, I just remember, remember the two V two. I think it's gunfight or something. That is so much stinking fun. <laughs> like it's, I don't know why. Cause it's just, I think it's cause it's so fast paced and random weapons. You never know what you're going to get. And it's just like these super tiny maps that forces you into each other. And I don't know, I love that. I love the fast pace because like this is a regular team death match. I'm like, this is fun, but it's boring. Like it's, we've yeah. done it before. Like this is what multiplayer has been for, you know, 15 years, well, 20 years, whatever. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, but when they finally are like, okay, no, we have this cool new mode where it's 2v2 and it's fast paced. And if after like two minutes, you're not dead, we're going to force you towards each other. And there's a flag in the middle you have to get. And it's like, oh, shoot. Um, it was a, such a fun game overall. Go check that out. Like it's, yeah, like I said, it's the first time Call of Duty multiplayer sucked me in best campaign they've ever done. It's a must buy. And yeah, it's technically like a remake or something of the original modern warfare, um, which kinda is kind of cool. It's not really a direct remake. The storyline's not the same. No. Yeah. That's, that's the thing. Like they take like some of like, like captain prices in it and there's like, um, and it's actually kind of cool. There's a bunch of Easter eggs to like Oh, I don't know. I don't really want to spoil it. There's don't some spoil e- it. there's some Easter eggs in there, and the way it ends, it's like, oh shoot! Like, I honestly, uh, yeah, I'm kind of looking forward to possibly a sequel to it. I guess cool. I'll just say that. I think uh, I agree with you on all those points. Call of Duty: Modern Warfare didn't make my top five, mm-hmm. but it's probably my top ten. Okay. Um, except they didn't make my honorable mentions either, so maybe it's in my top twenty. <laughs> uh, and, uh, better than nothing. Better than nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Great campaign. Mm-hmm. great action and multiplayer that actually feels like original Call of Duty mm-hmm. like yeah. I remember when Modern Warfare or Call of Duty 4 came out and how so much fun I had with that multiplayer yeah. this feels like that mm-hmm. so yeah, yeah super good multiplayer it's good stuff super fun it's good even game. the death match in it I know you found that boring that's like it was still really fun for me yeah no not to say like I still played a ton of it like I jumped in there and was like this is like the maps are really cool like I don't know. I, I really love the way, that, like, the layout of all the maps and everything. I haven't even played some of the new ones. Like, they put out a bunch of new maps. I haven't even touched they them. They remixed some of the old ones, I need too. To, uh, yeah, I need to jump in on that. They've added a couple new maps. Shipments in there. Yeah. I, 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 I need to go check it out. But. Yeah. Cool. Number two. Number two. All right. Number two, I've already talked about it on the show. <laughs> Gears of War 5. Okay. <laughs> yeah, you gave your review back in the day. I did. So, just edit that in. <laughs> yeah, just copy and paste that whole part yeah. of the episode in here. We talked for like 35 minutes. On this yeah. <laughs> um, Gears of War 5, basically, just to kind of quickly sum up my synopsis or my review of previously, was that mm-hmm. it it feels a lot like um, original Gears of War mm. in that the storyline actually moves. It's not as... Uh, didn't feel like a lot of like a lot of the humor in it like in four felt like really forced okay. um i feel like the exploration like the side missions was a really nice twist and changed up the the single player in ways that the previous games hadn't done before where it wasn't as linear hmm. as the other ones were it's like hey this is where you got to go but if you decide to stick around and go do the side missions you'll get some upgrades hmm. um using jack was a lot more clever where you had him as being like kind of like a, a thing you can upgrade that'll actually help you out and yeah. a way to actually fight bad guys with it. Um, and the multiplayer. I love the multiplayer. I'll play that multiplayer forever. I just played that one time with you and we did that. I remember what it was called. We just kept dying over it. We got I hate the, that what mode. Was, what was that mode? I that was forget. The, like horror? Like the escape not horror. or something? Escape, escape yeah. Escape that's what it is, yeah. It was so stinking hard. I like it. We we got almost to the end too, and then we kept dying at the same spot. Like it sucks. This is really dumb. This is so hard. I'm like, all right, man. Well, I'm going to bed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But um, the actual multiplayer, like that's. Yeah. I mean, to its credit, it did do that differently and try mm-hmm. to throw on a different mode. But it still improved on horde mode, and it still improved on the actual rather PvP mode. Mm-hmm. Um, 
it is new it knew what it wanted to be and did a really good job on executing on the single player and multiplayer fronts like it was and it's beautiful oh like, yeah i feel like although no. honestly i feel like in 2020 or 2019 even if your game isn't beautiful you you failed already no but it looks so good like yeah. i on pc i don't know did you play on pc or xbox Both. okay it's because on pc they have like i was able to play it I don't know how on my computer. I, I have a nice computer, but like my computer can't even play like Borderlands on high graphics settings, but like Gears of War, I played on Ultra and then they even had that 4K texture pack that I downloaded. I'm mm -hmm. like, holy crap. Like I plugged in my TV. I'm like, this is insane. Yeah. Like playing that in 4K, like, yeah. man, it looks so good. It's so clean. <laughs> it's so clean. Um, and that just even goes to show like how good developers they are that like, yeah, I can't run Borderlands 3 on like high settings, but I could play Gears 5 on Ultra and like my computer ran it just fine. It looked yeah. incredible. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was it was a cool game. It was Great a fun game. character development too. Mm -hmm. Like I love the characters in that game. <sighs> it's a good game, guys. Yeah. Please go it's play Gears game. of War 5. That was on Game Pass as well. Play with me. Zetch Almighty. It's my gamer tag. Hit me up. Yeah. Lame gamer tags. <laughs> it sounds so lame i got my playstation id <laughs> <laughs> now that's cool <laughs> okay <laughs> oh man um so my number two real quick uh is resident evil 2 we've already talked about it so i won't go much more but uh, just the couple notes i had was yeah lighting and sound was insane like the dark dark rooms that you're in like yeah playing it with hdr on i yeah. uh, was like so good so like the lighting was insane. The sound was insane. I love how they modernize like the controls and feel the whole thing. And like you said, it's basically a whole new game, a whole new story. Like there's some, there's major beats that they definitely stuck to, but yeah. it's like, it was so amazing. Like they just nailed it. So clean. So perfectly. Um, and it was such a fun story too. Like yeah. I had never played, I'd only really played little bits and pieces of the second one. I never did a full playthrough. Again, wasn't allowed to play as a little kid. But it was one of those things where, like, as an adult, you know, you get a hold of a copy or maybe I'm playing on an emulator or something. Maybe, you know. <laughs> yeah, maybe. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> Not that we do that. That's yeah. illegal. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, that's maybe I did it. Maybe I did, you know, you never know. Uh, <laughs> but, yeah, so to play through this, I'm like, oh, no, this is such a fun story. Like, it's kind of, even if there is, like, the weird campy dialogue and stuff like that, it's, like, it's still, like, such a cool, fun story if they had. Yeah. Um, so, so, yeah, that's, that's my number two now. All right. Number one. Number one. Game of the year. Number one game of the year. For, for you, for you, for you, for you. Yeah, not for Gay Super Gamer Boys. TM. For me. <laughs> for Zetch Keenan. X and her dad. Yeah. Well, Kurt and her dad is. Sekiro Shadows Die Twice. <laughs> yes. Okay. Okay. Just skip to that part. Yeah. Sekiro Shadows Die Twice surprised me in ways I did not think I could be surprised. Now I was shocked when I saw that on your list. Yeah. Because I've talked about this on the show. <laughs> I, I hate this game. <laughs> uh, I, I have grown to hate it. Um, but give me all the reasons why I'm wrong. So <laughs> I'm not going to say that you're wrong, but because it's different strokes for different folks. And especially when it comes to games that are literally from software games. Yeah. Okay. I, I, I had a hard time with Blood, uh, Bloodborne. Bloodborne. Uh, I've never tried the Dark Souls games, but it's like, yeah, I'm like, pff, I don't know. From so, soft scares me. <laughs> so the Souls games are really hard. Souls games are really, really, really hard. Mm. Bloodborne, I can do all right. I can hold my own for a little bit, and then I die, and then rage quit eventually. Yeah. <laughs> um, Sekiro. Yeah, in the first like twenty minutes, I got twenty minutes into the Bloodborne, I'm like, screw this. <laughs> like, <laughs> I actually like Bloodborne. I actually that is on my list of. I actually have a list this year of games that I want to beat, mm. and Bloodborne is on there. So, okay. you heard it here. Yeah. Beginning of January. That's that's when I, I keep beat it. That's one that's always perpetually on my list too, only because everyone keeps telling me how great it is. But every time I play it, I'm like, it, it looks great and feels great, but I'm so bad at it. Like, yeah. But, yeah. But Sekiro. What Sekiro, what Sekiro does right, okay, is you have a chance to, the, the progression in the game isn't necessarily getting through the storyline, okay? Mm -hmm. Progression in Sekiro is stick to an area, kill a bunch of dudes, go back to your, like, little shrine, rest up, level up your character go back out and basically keep farming for experience points. Mm. And then you end up with like a really super strong character with some extra abilities that you didn't have before. And now you can actually go through and actually fight more dudes and um, okay. do more things. So with that, 
I am like on the second chapter, second or third chapter. Okay. And I am, I still die a lot, but when you, the funnest feeling in that game is when you're on a roll and you're like stealthily taking out dudes left and right. Mm, yeah, yeah. And you're just like really sticking it to them. You're like, man, I am really BA right now. That's I'm just awesome. really kicking butt. <laughs> like even, it makes that moment, even when you feel like you die, even like, like, okay, whatever. I'm getting back up. I'm going to go kick some more butt. Yeah. I'm going to go do this. Yeah. So, and it's, it's really beautiful. It throws back to it, everything they, yeah, I love it, about it Kung looks, Fu. It looks so great. Yeah. Oh, it is, is, is stunning. Story, the storyline is more comprehensible than any other From Software game. <laughs> I realized when I started my playthrough too, I left on Japanese. I'm like having to read captions all the time. I'm like, I don't really know what's going on because I'm like not keeping up with all the captions and stuff. I, so maybe it would help me to put it back on English or something. But I it, it was it, on default. It was on Japanese. And I'm like, oh, okay. I kept it on Japanese. Okay. It makes the game feel so authentic. Mm. If like for me anyway, that I, if I played it in English, I feel like I'd be doing myself a disservice. Okay. Cause I get it. It definitely has an awesome like yeah. feel having it. Like when, yeah, when they're speaking in Japanese and you're just reading the subtitles, like, yeah, it feels way more like, I don't know. Yeah. Just legit in that sense. Like, it's like, okay, this isn't like some cheesy, uh, whatever, like American developer or yeah. something like double A making something like this is like a legit triple A Japanese developer making an awesome, like, <laughs> yeah. And the, like samurai game, the, even the Japanese acting, I don't know about the English acting, but the Japanese acting is really good. Yeah. And like, it feels, as I said, I think I keep coming back to the word authentic. Like it is like the, the way they portray Japanese culture in it is really cool. Um, yeah, it's like it's really cool, like bringing in all like Japanese like folklore and stuff like that and myths and like yeah. that's what all like the bosses and enemies and stuff you're fighting against are. Like it's just it's really neat. It's so cool, and there's a level of exploration to it too. Like on one level, like I was like going through like the main going through the main path, and then I found this like branch. I was like, what if I can get to that branch? Mm. And sure enough, you can get to the branch. And I'm like, hey, there's another branch. Hey, there's a cave. Hey, I just died because there's five dudes that I didn't see. <laughs> but it was like, man, I kind of wonder. I kind of wonder what's in that cave. Is it like a secret level? Like, what's going on? Yeah. So it is. It it's so so good. There was another point I wanted to make. Um, did I write it down? Um, no, I didn't. But it is. Oh, the mechanics, the gameplay mechanics. Mm. So like the arm, how you can actually like throw your arm and like use it as a grappling hook. Okay. That's upgradable. So you can actually equip like a flamethrower to your arm. You I think I have uh, the only upgrade I have right now for my arm is the, the shuriken. The shuriken, yeah. So you, and I haven't figured out how to really use it. You like. get a, get a little bit farther there. And you keep going just a little bit farther. You will get to a spot where it, like takes you like this like mansion, okay. and from there you can pick up the flamethrower and the uh, axe. Dang. And then so with the axe you can take down shield guys in like one hit. Nice. So it's okay. like yeah. So yeah, it makes some cool upgrades up ahead then. Exactly. So the more you explore, the more it, the game does a good job of balancing really tough, re, being really hard with payoff. So you actually get rewarded if you can just like just stick to it just a little longer. Yeah. And you get the reward. Huh. Like that game, game of the year. It makes me feel so cool. Yeah. Being a samurai, shinobi warrior. That's awesome. So it's my, Was it the wolf that he is? Or what do they call him? Yeah. Is it uh, the wolf? Yeah, he, yeah, he's the white, the white wolf. No, that's Geralt. <laughs> Geralt. Yeah, I haven't not watched The Witcher either. I don't know. Everyone keeps saying how good it is, but haven't haven't touched that one. Uh, but no, I. Yeah, like like you said, Bloodborne's like definitely on my list. Like I feel like I need to play and beat at least one from software game. Um, and everyone keeps saying how accessible Bloodborne is. Uh, but Sekiro does have such a cool. Like I like the samurai aesthetic and like this the Japanese myth and all this stuff. Like. I want to play and beat that one, but I've played for like five hours and I'm still stuck on like a quote unquote, like mini boss at the beginning. Like it's not even, is it the big tall guy? I don't even, it's like, uh, it's just like a general so-and-so like, it's not even like a big, Oh, dude. you're stuck like, on that guy. Yeah. It's just like, like I come around and it's, there's like three dogs and stuff. And then there's a guy right on the other side. It's like a little mini boss dude. It's like not even really a boss. He just has like two health bars basically. And I like can't beat him. <laughs> is it, are you at like, you're not at the mansion area, are you? Um, now you're, I'm it, trying to, it's so, is when it at nighttime or daytime? It's daytime. Okay. So I think I know what you're talking about. He's got like a, he's got a Japanese looking hat, doesn't he? <laughs> yeah. Like a lot of the characters do wow. in the game. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine that. <laughs> no, but, uh, yeah. So it's like, but I, 
yeah, it was, it, it hit me at such a weird time though. Like that game, like it was kind of like just a stressful time in life as well. So like I'm playing this game, I play for like 20 minutes. I'm like, I'm ready to snap this control over my <laughs> leg right now. So I like got to set it down and I pop in Death Stranding cause it's like such a relaxing game. It is very cathartic. Which, uh, that's my little segue into my game of the year is as <laughs> no one is surprised by. <laughs> Please tell me. Death Stranding. What? Number one game of the year. <laughs> Put it down for Super Gamer Boys because JJ's not here. <laughs> um, yeah, my game of the year is Death Stranding. Even with all the weirdness, even with all the, you know, Kojima weird story stuff he does and gameplay mechanics like Norman Reedus peeing and having to do number two and stuff like that or, you know, watch <laughs> watch Norman Reedus take a shower naked, like whatever. Like <laughs> all the weird stuff, you know, mushrooms around the world. Uh there's so many strange things I could just keep listing um, that out of context or even stranger. Uh, this game for me. <laughs> out of context. <laughs> <laughs> even <laughs> even in context is just as strange. <laughs> hey, uh, you're going to go poop and you're going to turn that poop into a grenade. Yeah. <laughs> That's not a joke. <laughs> That's not a joke. There's pee grenades, poop grenades, shower grenades, your shower water. Doesn't make sense. But you know what? This game hit me at just the right time. Like, I don't know. Yeah, it was one of those things where like, I don't know if it was like any other time in my life if this game would have hit me like the way it did. And I don't know what in my life necessarily caused it to hit well with me, but it was just one of those things like, I don't know, the right game at the right time. And I can't put my finger on it, but it was like, it was just blew my mind playing this thing. Um, it was a game that, you know, we waited, uh, about four years for or five years for like so it was like this huge wait with like the very first from the first reveal that he was making a game um to yeah when we got it everyone's on the edge of their seat in these weird cryptic trailers like what are we getting what is this game even about what's the gameplay like um and then for it to finally come out and be literally nothing like what anyone speculated like how can you with the Kojima yeah, game yeah like I mean I, w I was all up in that subreddit and it's like nothing anyone ever said it was like oh they didn't even come close to half the time I mean Kojima um, just sitting at home he's like laughing he's like yeah <laughs> he's guys are gonna be so surprised <laughs> right um but this game it had like the most beautiful art in it like graphics it I does. feel like again like on PS4 Pro and 4k HDR like it is so stinking beautiful um like I was uh, playing it the other day and um, our housemate got home from work and she walked through and I was just like, oh, what show is this? Like she totally thought it was, was like a TV show, a TV show wow. or like a documentary or something. And I'm like, oh, it's just playing a game. It's a video game. Like because uh, it, it, it just looks like you you know, pan over these like beautiful like mountain vistas and like these valleys with the rivers going through or these yeah. deserts and like. It is like such a visually like pleasing game. Like it is like so satisfying just to look at. Like Good so relaxing. As one of the best soundtracks ever in game, like the like original soundtrack, like instrumental stuff, as well as all like the the low roar. Like I never heard of low roar until Death true. Stranding stuff, like the trailer. And once I started digging into them, like Honestly, I have, well, I made the Death Stranding playlist on uh, my Spotify. I think I've shared a link to it on our Super Gamer Boys social media, but I listen to that all the time. Like, I'll just listen through all the low roar stuff and the silent poets, and ah, it's so stinking good. Like, I can listen to that on repeat, and anytime I get to that part in the game, I always turn it up a couple notches. My wife's like, did you just turn up the TV? I'm like, no, just, what? The, the song just started. <laughs> <laughs> but it was so good because it's like, that had so much emotion to the moment. Like all you're yeah. doing is hiking over a mountain, but all of a sudden like you're arriving at your destination and down in the valley you see like, you know, where you're heading and like this really dramatic song comes on or like really emotional kind of dark song from Low Roar or whatever, like the lyrics, like, yeah. oh man, you just like start feeling things and you're like, oh man, like I'm going to tear up here. Like there's nothing emotional happening other than just beautiful landscapes and good music. But it's like, I just want to cry right now. Like, I don't know why, which yeah. is ironic because that's a big part of the game. Like everyone always has the carillium, carillium uh, allergy where they, like, they all, all tears and cry and stuff like that. Yeah. <coughs> um, the physics engine in this game is insane. Like yeah. that's the whole gameplay mechanic is traversing this world, uh, up mountains, through valleys, over rivers, through rough terrain, rocks, boulders, whatever, snow that's like four foot deep. And 
like every time he stumbles and falls or you're trying to steady yourself or he's carrying no load or carrying, you know, 150 kgs of a load, yeah. like, um, you know, stacked like five, six, seven foot tall. Um, it's like playing a, was that crazy tower game? Yeah. That's, that's <laughs> While a good, walking. Sometimes, yeah. When you're walking around and you see your, like your load swaying back and forth and it's just like, Oh, is it, when's it going to go? When's it going to go? Yeah. But it's just the, the technical, like, aspect of this thing about like the person who had to develop all that like that's so much thing and work to like make such a realistic and it's not perfect by any means yeah. but i feel like they is they pretty closely nailed the feeling of what it would be like to hike through a rocky terrain over the mountains in a video game like when you like misstep like even like you'll be walking and you think you're you have good solid footing and then a rock with like yeah a rock like slides or you hit some mud or something it's slippery and he's like Ugh, like you know shakes and you gotta hit the buttons to steady yourself and not fall over it's just insane um the story is not for everyone i tell it, all my buddies that like whenever they're like should i play that game i'm like so here's the deal <laughs> uh the story is 100% not for everyone. Do you like grenades made of fecal matter? <laughs> yeah, that's what I should like if start. If I ever took a poop grenade, you would do. <laughs> um, but I, I just eat it up. Like I love it. Like I know earlier you mentioned something about like just him being kind of like pre- he's pretentious. Pretentious. Okay. Like, the story is crazy to the point where it's just like okay, like you're you got to get over yourself here. Yeah. <laughs> but I don't know. I I love that. And what I really love too is this like he's such like a huge Hollywood movie buff guy. Like he's so into like all these obscure Hollywood movies to even like big blockbuster, classic cult movies or whatever. And there's so many like cool, just references and nods to different things like that. Like even like the whole cliff characters really a nod to, um, uh, like I've seen like side by side with stuff from like apocalypse now, like that film and stuff like that. Like there's this, this soldier character. Um, and yeah, there's just a lot of cool visual, um, just, cues and representations of things that like, Oh, I've seen something like that from here or there or the other thing. And, yeah. um, and, and that, that all plays into like the story. Like he just pulls from so many sources when he's writing a story, which I mean, that kind of probably why it's so discombobulated, that's why it can be just so, so discombobulated, but it's also like, I don't know, for me, I don't know what it is. Like, it doesn't make sense. Like I said earlier, like I can't put my finger on it, but it like, um, really, I don't know, makes it more interesting to me i guess it's one of those things that just like keeps me on on my toes i like a game that keeps me on my toes whether it's like a good fast-paced game or if it's a story where like oh, i really got to think about this and figure it out because yeah. i mean and even with a kojima game there's some things that you just gotta let go because you're not going to figure out but there's some things that's like oh if you really just you know there is some meaning there and maybe it doesn't come across exactly right because again like he's this japanese guy trying to speak to this like well, like you know, a big American audience or whatever, these yeah. dumb, dumb Americans who play Call of Duty. That's a quote by him, actually. Why he's like, that's why Americans don't like this game because they just like Call of Duty. He's pretentious. Um, <laughs> like. But uh, he, uh, yeah, but it's one of those things. Like, oh, like there, there's a lot in there that just I don't know. There's a really interesting plot points, and even like the setting. Just taking all like weird story stuff aside, but like the setting is cool. Uh, the technology is cool. The um, I think some of the characters are neat and just like the way they develop them. They're crazy, zany, off the wall. Like their names are ridiculous, but it's like, they're still fun. Like, I don't know. I enjoy like meeting a new character every like couple missions and it's, it's a good game. I don't it, know. I think it's the best of 2019. It is not a bad game. Yeah. And I'm really happy that you love it so much. <laughs> I yeah. the Games are made to be enjoyed. I was. I can't hate too much on it. Yeah. I, I disagree on some points, but hey. Yeah. As long as you enjoy it. <laughs> I was so worried when it was coming out that I was going to hate it because it's been so long and I've been so hyped for it. And it was one of those things where, like I've overhyped it in my mind. There's no way I can like it now. <laughs> and then I played it. I'm like, this is better than I thought it could be. I and will say. <laughs> it's crazy. Like, I don't know. It blows my mind. What I actually do love most about Death Stranding is the fact that it isn't really focused on shooters. No. Yeah. There's very little I think combat. I already said that already, but yeah. Yeah. There, there's very little combat for the most part. It, there's later on, and really to push the story forward, they add some combat. And honestly, that's the weakest points. Like, I wish there wasn't some of, like, once they start adding, like, machine guns and shotguns and stuff, like, oh, this feels weird. Like, I've been, like, <laughs> traversing this world and exploring and so, like, peaceful or, like, when I, like, usually it's just avoiding the conflict. And now all of a sudden yeah. it's like, oh, no, here's, here's a gun. Like, go shoot some stuff. Like, okay. And it doesn't feel great even 
mechanically like yeah with a controller is like it's weird control like it's not very smooth and easy to shoot things but um yeah. that was definitely the weakest point but i don't know for me like that was one of the few weak points like they um and it, even then even when they introduce it it's not like a major part of the game that ruined it for me so uh, yeah see i haven't gotten to that point yet i'm okay. still like just like in the exploration phase okay so i think i'm on like act three or four okay yeah i think maybe come four or five like tail into four or five i think it's the very first time you start seeing maybe some real yes. weapons so okay and it, it get it gets weird but it's good it gets really weird <laughs> so to piggyback off your point i feel that like the game is is disjointed but you are kind of right it kind of still appeals to me because i'm still like in my head i'm like i gotta keep playing to figure out what's mm -hmm. gonna happen are you have you been the kind of mainlining the story as well or are you doing a lot of the side stuff because i've i'm doing some of the side stuff okay i haven't done all the side stuff mm -hmm. i feel like no matter what i do i get an s rank and i'm like can you get lower than an s rank in this you, game you can later <laughs> on i start getting some a's and b's and it hurts too because i use keep getting s s s s and then i'm like no not an a <laughs> that's horrible <laughs> it's ruined um well yeah the reason i asked that is because when i was playing earlier it definitely the story was more slow paced and dragged out and kind of discombobulated when I was doing all the side missions but I was having so much fun doing the side missions I was like screw it whatever I'll just keep doing them yeah. but then I did get to a point where it's like I'm really craving to know and understand what the heck the story is so I finally I just hunker down like I just got to do it so I just started mainlining all the gold missions like they're all they're always yeah, they're like circled in gold or whatever or out like they have this line through them so um and that's really what I've done the last couple of weeks is just mainline it and I've gone I went from like I was like in chapter four or five and just in like what little time I've been able to play, I'm at like the last couple chapters now. Okay. So you can get it done pretty quick if you can just hunker down and mainline it. But um, and the story makes a little more sense. But at on the same at the same time, it, it is like yeah, I really do want to like do more of those side missions. Like they are so cathartic, so relaxing. Yeah, but so fun. Yeah, I'll I'll finish it. I think it's on my list. I've got a really big list. There's I like can't say like the 40 same. games on that list. Yeah, I can't say the same for Sekiro because that game's so hard. I'll try. I'm gonna give it a go, <laughs> a little college try, but I don't know. We'll see. Did you buy it? Yeah, you bought it. it you was hate on, it. Uh, so I got it like a gift card for for Christmas, and it was on sale over Christmas, so I got it. Um, and you regret the and, hour you spent. <laughs> yeah, so I mean, so far, but everyone just talks about how great it is. Like I like I must just be missing something. So once I think I just need to keep trying it until it clicks. Like it is one of those games, and I think you even mentioned it. I think it's in Discord or something like, uh, or maybe I saw it on Twitter. I don't remember. Um, eventually, like those games, Bloodborne, all those games, like they just click. Like you just got to learn the rhythm. It's almost like a rhythm. Someone even compared yeah. it to a rhythm game. Like you just got to learn the rhythm. Got to learn the feel. Uh, you got to learn like the enemies. Yeah. Um, and once you figure that out, like and figure out their like, okay, block, block, parry, attack, whatever. Like their thing is to kill them. You know then you got it. And can, I feel like yeah. I, like I said, I was such in a weird headspace. I just kept like rage quitting and not giving <laughs> it the time. I think if I can just sit down and give it time and actually like going with a level head, I might enjoy it. But until then I regret the purchase now. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Uh, cool. Well, that wraps it up. Thank you guys so much for tuning into our 2019 game of the year. Um, go check all those games out. They're all, amazing games um even the games that make me you know beat my head against a brick wall and he's uh, not just talking about death stranding <laughs> not talking about death stranding <laughs> he's the, uh, i am i'm talking about death stranding yeah uh a lot of fun games there a lot of great games that came out last year that uh yeah really uh, a, lot, a lot of good games like we said at the beginning a lot of good games not nothing really great but definitely still worth spending your time playing because um video games are cool they're they're hip yeah they're greedy, man. <laughs> um, thank you guys so much for listening. Uh, like we mentioned at the beginning of the show, if you could go check out our Patreon, it's patreon.com slash supergamerboys. Um, you can support us there, help keep the mics running, uh, and help us keep the content rolling out to your ear holes and eye holes. Um, you can always go to supergamerboys.com slash store and buy some merch. Uh, that also helps help support us. We have uh, coffee mugs like this one here. We got stickers. We got T-shirts. We got socks. Uh, someone bought a pair of socks, got them for Christmas, um, gave them as a gift. So nice. Supergamerboys <laughs> logo socks. <laughs> um, 
yeah, there's some cool stuff and that helps uh, support us just a little bit. I think I didn't, I didn't price too competitively because I was more like, I just want people to buy our merch. <laughs> I don't care if I just make a dollar off this, but go check it out. Um, rate and review us on iTunes. That helps a ton. Yep. Uh, go over to Apple Podcasts, leave some reviews. Uh, it's been a while since we've gotten a new review, so that would be mighty helpful. Uh, and also subscribe on YouTube. Um, that's cool too. Uh, you can find us during the week at supergamerboys.com, Twitter and Instagram. We're at supergamerboys, facebook.com slash supergamerboys. I'm on Twitter at G Morling. Zetch is on Twitter at Zetch Keenan. Zetch Keenan. Check that out. And I usually try to have the lower thirds, I think at the beginning of the episode. So if you want to see his Twitter handle, go back to the beginning. It'll be there. Um, thank you so much to Star Andrews for our logo. Uh, check her out on Instagram at Ground Floor Graphics and Facebook.com slash Ground Floor Graphics. All righty. Well, that was fun. It was a good show. Uh, I, I felt rusty, a little nervous at the beginning, but we got it. I think we got it. I think we're good. It was and a uh, yeah, it's fun. It's good to have you back. I'm trying to think of a video game pun and nothing's coming. Nothing's coming. <laughs> <laughs> um, good to have you back on the show. Thanks, man. Um, Maybe you'll be back another time soon. We'll see. Mayhaps. Um, like we mentioned, JJ may or may not be coming back soon. We'll see. Uh, maybe Zetch will be replacing him. Maybe I fire JJ for real and I'm just lying to all you guys. That would be so sad and I'd feel terrible about <laughs> <That> myself. Would... <laughs> <laughs> he, he saw it coming. It was the right... I've been talking about it for months. So no, it's fine. All righty, guys. Well, we love you. We will see you all next week. And uh, yeah, we'll catch you all on the flippity flop. <laughs>